a little over a year ago. Undefeated Alabama met undefeated LSU in the game of the year. Into the end zone! Touchdown, Alabama! Touchdown, Tigers! How about that? The Tigers were coming. Today, they arrived. But this season has been anything but a victory ride for LSU, with bright spots hard to find. Emory gets it. Touchdown! Meanwhile, the tide continues to roll. Statement time for Alabama. The juggernaut rolls on. It's number one Alabama against LSU in a primetime showdown in Death Valley. And so we are in Death Valley. And the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us the 85th meeting between the Tigers of LSU and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Alabama comes in unbeaten and number one in the country. And as you take a look at the SEC standings, it looks like this. Florida has punched their ticket to Atlanta by virtue of their win earlier in our first game. The victory over Tennessee sends the Gators to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta December 19th. Will it be Alabama to face him? We're going to find out tonight. Alabama wins, and they are headed to Atlanta as well. Welcome to Baton Rouge, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler with Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl. Partner, only in this topsy-turvy 2020 season could you think about a defending national champion like LSU bigging the biggest underdog in 40 years trying to defend their crown against a team like Alabama. And Alabama's the team that's rolling like LSU was a year ago. Well, you summed it up right. I mean, for a decade, this has been the marquee game in this conference. And you knew both teams knew they were the better team and they'd fight it out. LSU wants to believe, but they need some early success. Alabama wants to snuff it out right away. But remember, we know playing on the road is number one is pressure. So we'll see what happens. Well, last year it was Joe Burrow, who was a Heisman candidate, went on to win it. This year we've got a guy that's in the mix for Alabama and Mac Jones. Yeah, we said, when will we ever see a year like this? Well, it <laughs> took a year and Mac Jones is doing it. His stats are amazing when you look at it, but when you watch him play, what he does, I mean, he takes the top off the defense. If you're not careful, he'll hit him deep. Maneuvers the pocket as well as you can making those throws. And when you need that tight throw to a Devontae Smith, he just carves you up. He's having a Heisman year and, more importantly, a championship year. You know, we talked at the end of the week uh, about this Alabama team and yeah. having seen them so many times, it just looks like they're getting better every week. You know, la last week we said uh, they got a big three. Well, any direction you look, they're big, okay? Let, you know, you look one way, and they got a big five. That offensive line, so physical. Five guys have been mauling people. They could almost run every play and be contenders. Then you look in the secondary. Patrick Sertan is one of the elite corners. Josh Job is coming on strong. A pair right there. And then they got that defensive line. It's like a big seven, eight, or nine. Almost doesn't seem <laughs> fair. Alabama is rotating one guy in after another. They're a number one team in the country. Well, LSU is struggling offensively without a doubt. And it doesn't help that another guy opted out this week. If you missed it, Terrace Marshall, who's the leading receiver, his last catch was a touchdown against Texas A&M. He went to Ed Argeron and said, Coach, I'm going and preparing for the NFL draft. So they lose their top receiver. That doesn't help the cause when you got two freshman now, quarterbacks. Now, that means only one returning starter back on this offense for LSU. And as you mentioned, they're going with two true freshmen. With the injury to Miles Brennan, the starter at the beginning of the year, two potentially good football players, but potential in a game like this is not enough. They need some help. And I think in this game, it's got to be this LSU defense and perhaps at their All-American, Derek Stingley. He's going to be matched up against Devontae Smith. Could he get some wins, get some field position for these young quarters? This offense for LSU needs some help. Well, that's the matchup we'll watch. That's worth the price of admission. Devontae Smith against Derek Stingley. Kickoff is coming up. Alabama looking for a little payback from the loss on their home field last year. The Home Depot. SC Alabama and LSU. 
started this back in 1895. Here comes the top-ranked Crimson Tide. They are 7-0 against LSU when they're the number one team in the country. And LSU, this first home game for them in six weeks in this crazy season. There's a giant elephant in the room, or in this case, the stadium that we haven't even talked about yet. With more on that third member of our team is Jamie Erdahl. Jamie? Brad, that's right. It's been almost 10 minutes. We've been on the air. We haven't said Nick Saban's name yet. Well, that must mean things are back to normal for Alabama's head coach who missed last week's game, the Iron Bowl. His first game missed as a coach in 47 years due to testing positive to COVID-19. He was isolated and quarantined at home for all of last week, but those 10 days did bleed into the beginning of this week in terms of game preparation for LSU. He maintained meeting protocol as best he could, but he was thrilled to return to his team and be back around his guys. However, things are not normal for his entire coaching staff. We have learned that four assistant coaches are not with Alabama tonight. Nick Saban told me that three of which are on-field assistants. None of them are play callers, though, which means the offensive, defensive, and special team play callers remain intact. Most notably, Charlie Strong will have a headset on this evening for Alabama. I asked Strong how it felt to get fitted for that headset once again. He said it fits just fine. <laughs> Carl Scott, Sal Sinceri, Holman Wiggins, and Freddie Roach won't be coaching tonight for Alabama. Gary and I are sport coach now. We may switch to top coats later. <laughs> it's 47 degrees. Yeah, it's perfect, though, right? For I, football, I know. it's perfect. It is. It is. Not a normal scene, obviously, at Tiger Stadium with the limited crowd. Alabama leads the series 53-26-5. and five. The last time Alabama was here, didn't go so well for the Tigers. The 29 and nothing shut out. LSU won the toss and deferred. So Avery Atkins will tee it up. And Brian Robinson is back deep for the tie. A win tonight. And Alabama will join Florida December 19th in Atlanta for the SEC championship. And here we go. And Alabama will work from the 25-yard line. And it all starts with the guy that we talked about, Mac Jones, having a sensational season. His team has total confidence in him. This time a year ago, he was a fill-in for Tua Tagovailoa. Now he is the man. Michael McCorkle, Mac Jones, second in the country in completion percentage. Comes in with 23 touchdowns. Here's the guy that joins him. Landon Dickerson, you saw him with the offensive and defensive line rallied around him. It was a very spirited talk he gave his guys, and he leads that great offensive line for the time. First down. And the throw is complete. And it's Devontae Smith right off the bat. And he's down about eight yards on the opening snap against the LSU defense. That looks like this. Tigers, defensive front. Micah Baskerville's coming off a career-high 12 tackles in last week's game with Jabril Cox. And there's Derek Stingley Jr. in the back end, the secondary against this high-powered Alabama aerial attack. Second down and two. Najee Harris. Nice spin move, first down, still going. Up to the 45-yard line. So you think Najee, big, strong, fast. I got to come up and really take him on. Point of attack, block, whoops. <laughs> spin move. Because on that one, you know Todd Harris was saying, I'm going to get a piece of him right away. Not, not much. <laughs> yeah, not First down out to the 45. Slade Bolton is in the game. An ankle problem for the slot receiver for Alabama. Of course, he took over when Jalen Waddle was injured earlier in the season. Oh, Quick slant. Oh, Devontae oh, took oh. a shot from Jacoby Stevens. He'll let you know he's in the vicinity. Jacoby Stevens is... Started 26 consecutive games. He's the leader of this defense with Grant Delphi Turing Pro. He's the safety that has to do the communications back there, and uh, he communicated well on that one. <laughs> We're in that coveted number seven in the secondary for LSU that some other greats, one of his favorites was Patrick Peterson, of course. And the previous play is under further review. Let's we'll see if it was targeting. 
Jacoby just a big smile. Thought that he had a nice clean hit. We'll get another look at it. Well, it's close, I guess. Yeah, I wonder, wonder what Gene would think of this. And let's see what Gene Steratore thinks of that. Gene? You know, I think it's a really good hit, guys. I mean, Stevens is getting in there. He doesn't lower the head, in my opinion, in an attacking fashion and tries to get a piece of the shoulder. Now, as it relates to the head and neck area, I think he's below that line as well. It's a close hit, but I think it's a legal play. Yeah, he used his arms a little too, didn't he, Jane? When he hit him, he brought his arms with him a bit. Yes, and I think that's where you get into that attacking posture, Gary, where, yeah. you know, are we leading with the helmet and attacking with the helmet alone, or are we trying to get that shoulder in and body? And, and I believe he does get that, uh, you know, enough of that in there for me. Number seven can remain in the game. Second down. And Jacoby Stevens says, yep. Well, we don't, obviously, we don't uh, root for anybody against anybody, but Jacoby Stevens is a fun guy to watch, and LSU needs him in that secondary. No doubt. He sent a message. It's the tears are probably still coming down yes. Devontae Smith's face yeah, mask. Devontae don't back down from anybody. No. So pick up a five, second and five. Straight up the gut. Najee Harris. That's his out for maybe a two-yard gain. He's going to bring up third down. Neil Farrell made the stop. Alabama 59% of the year on third down situations. Quite frankly, they don't get in third down situations very often. And when they do, they're good at it. And lately, LSU has been great at stopping third down. Two of the last 26. They shift the tight ends, two of them. Forrestal goes out into a slot. And now we got a timeout taken by LSU. Didn't like their alignment defensively, so we'll take the timeout with them here early in the first quarter in Baton Rouge. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the completely free and always on sports news network. For highlights, breaking news, and expert picks, download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. When we were talking to Bo Pelini, the defensive coordinator for LSU, I said, Bo, last 26 times you've had a third down, only two conversions. I said, you ready? He goes, well, we've got to earn the chance to try to stop them. Well, they've earned the chance. They've earned it by getting them in a third down and three. Mac Jones trying to move the center official out of the way and does. And they jumped offside. Landon Dickerson says with the nose, Neil Farrell, if he's right, it's a first down. Offside with contact, defense number 92. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. And that is the call. So an easy one there. Matt Jones claps, puts his hands out, just out of the peripheral vision. You know, you heard them down there, but you can hear it, and you can see the movement of the quarterback. And Farrell... Jumps up. So first down at the 45 of LSU. Extra offensive lineman in the game. And two tight ends in play action. Jones rifles it down the middle to Mechie. And Mechie's got it all the way down to the 20 yard line. Well, as Brad mentioned, they lost Jalen Waddle, one of the great players we have in college football, but Mechie has held his own in that spot. Maybe not the deep explosion, but he's a good receiver. Najee Harris on first down of the 19, weaves his way to the 14, a pickup of five. So immediately on the opening drive, Alabama in the red zone. They're 90% effective on the year. There's no doubt watching the tape, this LSU defense is better. But this Alabama defense, there's no weak point. There's nowhere you can lean. Like, okay, we're going to give this guy some room. It's yeah. just anywhere you look. They've got stars and playmakers. Bill Billingsley, number 19, another tight end in motion. Najee Harris inside the 10, the 5, the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. The 18th rushing touchdown for number 22. And as I said, sometimes we talk about the big three, Devontae Smith and Najee Harris, that guy number 22 right there in Mac Jones. 
But that offensive line just cleared them out. Get them in space, and it's tough to tackle number 22. Will Reichard in for the point after. He's hit them all this year so far, all 52. Out of a Mac Jones hold, and it's up and perfect. Well, quite an opening drive for Alabama. Just over three minutes to go 75 yards in seven plays. Najee Harris does the final 14 for the touchdown. Gary thinks it's so warm, he's going to pop over there later for a dip. Let's go. 7 nothing, Alabama. Here's the touchdown. Well, if you got to get to the second level with your back, Dickerson, Monte Brown, the watch. Let them, I'm going to go right out of the camera here because that's how far he drives Damone Clark backwards. Number 70 is 10 yards oh. downfield, pushing number 18 Clark out of the way. And as you say, a couple missed tackles, but that's a good block. Fair catch taken around the 17-yard line by Josh Williams. And so we'll see LSU's offense for the first time tonight. And they're playing in a seven-point hole already. T.J. Finley, the freshman. Four starts this season. He's 2-2. Two and two. He's had some high moments. He's had some low moments. Turns the ball over too much has been the biggest problem. And here's the offense that joins him. Eric Gilbert now, the freshman tight end, is their number one receiver with... Terrace Marshall having opted out earlier this week, so that's his number one target. There he is, number two. In the slot to the left side, tied Davis Price in the backfield with Finley. We've lost Brad and Gary up in the booth for right now as TJ Finley hands the ball off. I know our team is working feverishly to get them back. Brad was just saying that TJ Finley was getting the start tonight. Bit of a competition. It's been going on a couple weeks with Max Johnson. But Ed Ogeron once again went with Finley for the start, but he did say that they will be using Max Johnson throughout this evening. opening up the first couple plays here in his series the pass play the tight end Eric Gilbert freshman to freshman connection they've been a they've been adjusting to this offense together for this being the first couple plays for TJ Finley I think it's telling a lot for this offensive play calling for him to go back to back to back pass plays trying to get him comfortable as he settles in here Once again, we have lost audio in the booth with Brad and Gary. We are working to get it back. <laughs> Second and 10 now for LSU as TJ Finley tries to work the Tigers down the field in their opening drive on offense. Alabama having scored on their opening drive here in the first quarter. Finley once again connecting 
Eric Gilbert. There you go, Brad. Hi, Jamie. Good I to have knew, you back. I knew you wanted my job. <laughs> and a great job it was. Not as smooth as you, you guys, but I'm happy to have you back. I could hear you and you couldn't hear us, and we apologize for our technical difficulties. They always say it's crazy in Death Valley on a Saturday night. Well, there you go. And LSU on the move with Finley again throwing complete. And it looks like it's going to be a first down to Ute. So LSU moving it right down the field on their opening drive. I think you're seeing the potential of T.J. Finley. He can throw that football when he has protection. A&M works all over him in that football game. He was diving away from blitzers, but when he steps into the throw, he's got the big time arm. He looks really comfortable on this opening drive. And he's carried them from their own 25 to the Alabama 24. And no pass rush. Give credit to that offensive line that struggled so much against A&M a week ago. Trey Bradford in the backfield with Finley on a first down. Gilbert in motion, and now we've got an LSU timeout. And that was their second so far here in the early going. 8.51 remaining first quarter. LSU on the move, trailing Alabama by seven. There's, I'm telling you, she was on it. She was rolling. LSU would like to keep this thing rolling at the 24-yard line. Eighth play of their drive coming up. They've already used two timeouts. And T.J. Finley has been on target so far. Five out of six for 48 yards on this drive. Gilbert's been his number one target to this point. He's going to go on a wheel route to his tailback, and he in and out of his hands. Trey Bradford had it and had it knocked out of there by Dylan Moses. This is a great play and a great read by Dylan Moses. This is a nice scheme to get a running back open on the wheel route. Look from up here like he had it, but Dylan Moses does his job and breaks it up just, just a hair just earlier, earlier, and that would have been a completion. You got it. Well, when you're back there at quarterback, you think, I got a guy wide open, I can't miss him, I can't miss him, and then just a hair. Blitz coming. Nice run by Davis Price. He's short of the first down by about a yard. Jordan Battle brought him down, but it's going to be third and one. LSU loves to go hurry up on third and fourth short yardage. Here they go. And try to bounce it outside, and I think he got just enough. Second effort. Now, now the head linesman comes in, and he does not have it spotted as a first down. So if you're Ed Ogeron here making a decision, seeing how Alabama moved the ball, I don't go field goal. I try to make this. You need touchdowns. You can't go field goal here. It's fourth down, and they are under center. And Alabama, did they take a timeout? We're at the. That stoppage in play was to review the run by Davis Price, whether or not. He reached the first down marker, and the ruling on the field stands is that he's just a little bit short because the knee scraped right there as yeah. he was reaching out, just as he was reaching the ball out. So it's fourth down and inches. Eight out of 11 on the year for LSU, and as Gary said, when you're three and four and you're playing the number one team in the country, and, and the offense that Alabama has shown and has shown prior to this game, I think you're saying we've got to get seven points on this drive. It's been a long time since they produced a touchdown at home against Alabama. I mentioned two years ago it was 29 to nothing. So here they're trying to get it to the basically 14-yard line. And they didn't. Nothing. Wow. What a stop. Christian Harris was the first guy there. And that'll make a head coach, a defensive-minded head coach, a happy man. So you can see that T.J. Finley comes up and declares to the Alabama team that I might run the sneak. Alabama moves in tight, but point of attack. As you said, Christian Harris just beat the ball carrier to the spot, comes right off the edge, unblocked, and makes the play. So Alabama takes over on downs. They've only given up 33 points in the last 18 quarters, and they didn't give up any there. 
So mark that one down. A missed opportunity on fourth and short. You can see they looked at it. They looked to the bench. They probably had the option of running the sneak or the running back. They decided to go the running back off tackle. Didn't work. Play fake. Matt Jones firing complete. Got it to Billingsley, and he's all the way out across the 40. He's becoming a big part now all of a sudden of this Alabama offense. You know, it kind of reminds me Billingsley does of when Alabama a couple years ago had Irv Smith at that tight end right. spot. Playing with the Vikings right now. Comes across the field, goes back, looks like he's going to go across, but then weaves back out, and again, a perfect throw. Receiver catches it in stride. So first down of the pickup of 27 to the 42. Here's a toss sweep. Najee Harris with blockers in front. Broke one tackle. Now he turns on the speed and he's all the way for the 31 yard line before he flies in to the and LSU gonna, bench. And it's going to be 15 more or half the distance to the goal, either way you want to look at Is it. Is that Coach Robbie? Is that Joe, John Robinson down on the sideline? Oh, yeah, right at their collision. Former Late USC hit. and Rams coach. It just looked like him. I shouldn't have speculated that quick. No, John Forever. It just looked like him. As they're helping him up, and it is, it is it Coach is. Robinson. Yeah. Good eye. Well, he's too old to be taking hits like that anymore. Has to play. Personal foul. Late hit. Defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So Coach Robinson is up. Got yes. Lid back on. Put that ball cap back on. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> There's the end of the play. Najee Harris shoved out of bounds, and down goes John. Yep. Uh, phew, head first, too. There's the late hit by Jacoby Stevens, Just letting everybody know he's in the vicinity tonight, including Devontae Smith and now Najee Harris. At the 15, a little toss. Devontae Smith with Mechie blocking down the sideline. He's got it down inside the five. How but as pretty as this play designed by Steve Sarkeesian, an elite game planner and play caller. You do a little bit of that orbit motion. Go behind the quarterback, then you toss it to your star. And this time, those receivers, and, and the Alabama receivers are great at this, those receivers out front block. And they were blocking on that play. No doubt about that. There's Steve Sarkeesian. He was the acting head coach a week ago when Nick was out with the COVID positive COVID a week ago. Now it's at the three-yard line. First and goal. Looking for their second touchdown is Alabama. Najee Harris looking for his second. And not quite. Got close inside the one. Malone Clark brought him down. This time this LSU defense forces Najee to bounce out. Can't use all his parking power on the play. And Clark is able to wrap him up and Save a touchdown for now. From our AT&T 5G pylon cam, Najee's coming right at you, but so is Clark. You saw he tried to twist his arm into the pylon, but not quite. Alabama with their jumbo set in there now on second down and goal inside the one. Najee Harris. Big pile up at the goal line. No signal yet. LSU holding up the football. And down as well. Jacoby and Gilroy on the bottom of that pile. Meanwhile, it's going to be third and goal about the length of the football. Here's another look. This time, point of attack handled well by that LSU defense. No push that time. Jabril Cox stripped the ball out at the very end. And we'll be right back. With the injury, we didn't even get the call from the official. On the field, it was ruled a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchback. Yeah, we were saying, I said they holding the ball up, but did he cross the goal line before the fumble? Gene Steratore is with us. You see the big pileup with Farrell. And everybody else trying to grab yeah, for the ball. 
You know, the other thing that's pretty good here is that Najee Harris has those white gloves on. And to me, after his second effort, I think you can clearly see both hands around that football. And it appears to me that it's breaking the goal line. We know as soon as that happens, this play is over and it's dead. Uh, in my opinion right now, I have him as a touchdown with possession. We watch this replay here. To me, he's still firmly controlling that ball, and we've broken the plane of the goal line right there. I'm with you, Gene. Yeah, I thought the one before, too, from the backside, you could see the ball clearly touch the line. Yeah, right here, this is the look. He's got the ball in his hand. He's like already Gene's broken right. the plane at that point. I know that everybody, when you stick that ball, everybody whacks it, but this time just a little too late for LSU, and Alabama completes another drive machine-like drive by Alabama. Ray Thornton and Neil Farrell, the guys try to rip it out of there. And again, our replay official is Mitchell Wilkins. Alex Moore, our referee, is under the hood. Nick Saban thinks it's a touchdown. That would reverse the call, which on the field was a fumble recovery in the end zone by LSU. So this would be a big swing. LSU getting the ball back compared to another Alabama touchdown. Well, if you combine that with the fourth and short that LSU did not make on the other side when they tried to get this yeah. touchdown and now Alabama marches right down the field in what, five, six, five plays for 84 yards. So Ed Arjuan patiently waiting as well. As this one's taken a while. It's an important call, obviously, at the goal line and in the end zone. Harris saying I reached over talking to Butch Jones former yeah. Tennessee the other guy looks coach. familiar Here's that's Butch Jones after review the runner stretched the ball across the goal line with possession resulting in the touchdown so Najee Harris did what we thought what Gene thought and what Najee thought Reached it across the goal line for the touchdown. Well, Najee's about as cool as you can be. And when he starts to worry a little bit, you wonder. <laughs> I think he thought he got it across, but you never know if the replay see official sees it. And Gene saw it. You saw it. We all saw it. But it was for a second. Ellis, you said we got the ball, but to no avail. So 64 yards and two touchdowns already for Najee Harris. And the extra point upcoming. Record comes up and has a word with Mac Jones, starting quarterback and his holder. Up and good. So Najee Harris had a 27-yard run. Billingsley had a 27-yard reception in that drive. And now we got a flag down on the extra points. Did they run into the kicker after it? Yes. yes. Yep. Running into the kicker. They're asking Coach Saban if he'd like to take half the distance to go for two or take the point. Right into the kicker. Defense. That penalty's declined. The try is good. So Najee Harris having a good first quarter here. He scored earlier from 14 yards out. This one went for 27. Then they tacked on 15 for that hit. And on the fifth play of the drive, Najee says, I got this one for the second time tonight. Touchdown, Alabama, 14-0. So LSU now. After the fair catch on the kick takes over at the 25 last time they got the ball they had a good looking drive going came up with a fourth and inches and then turned it over on downs after going 60 yards and 11 plays they'd like to put one together here because now they're down two scores and the question is will just the passing game be enough for LSU TJ Finley showed his arm but I think they need to help them with a bit more running game. And their four losses, none of them did they rush for 100 yards. Right now John Emery's in a tailback, and he'll get the carry. And Emery, a tough three yards before Dylan Moses brings him down. 
Against Mississippi State, they rushed for 80, Missouri for 49, Auburn for 32 yards, and Texas A&M for 36. Now there's some sack yardage in there, but not a lot. They just have not had a running game to help these young quarterbacks. Finley, quick slant behind his receiver a little bit and completes. Intended for Coy Moore. And that has been the problem with LSU when you watch the AM game. The AM defense continued to blitz this LSU offense, and all the hot reads were not smooth. The young quarterback, the young receivers, you know, it's not like it was a year ago right. when they had those guys who were a machine against the blitz. Here's that look, that six man front that AM showed. Bama's going to say, hey, can you stop it? Because you didn't stop it last week. Finley takes a moment. A third down and eight. Takes the hand up. He's in trouble immediately. Trying to get away and can't. They'll bring him down at the 25. Daniel Wright, one of the first guys there. And then Will Anderson. Well, Ness, this is not easy for a veteran quarterback, but the fake blitz is coming from one side, and then the real blitz comes from the other side. Daniel Wright is coming from one side. John Battle is faking the other side, and there's guys that play two or three years in the league have trouble with that. Now, Joe Burrow handled it, but Joe Burrow was a veteran and a big-time veteran at quarterback. Monte Smith just gets everybody out of the way. And as the kick goes out think, of the bounds. I don't at, think this uh, made the 50 even. Uh, no, it didn't. So. 47 or 48. Got a Papa John's update in New York. Here's a. Hey, Ness, you may have heard the ACC did some schedule reshuffling recently, and Miami visiting Duke was one of those moves. Huge hole for Cameron Davis. He goes 34 yards. Miami on top of Duke, 14 0 as they play in the second quarter. Right back to you. The Hurricanes only one loss on the season. Here, Alabama, no losses. And rank number one. They look like it again so far. That was only a 22-yard punt. And now Forrestal in motion, but Landon Dickerson saying, no, it was uh, Jacqueline Roy. Let's see if he's right. Offside with contact, defense number 99. <laughs> Five-yard penalty, still first down. I love Landon Dickerson. Oh, he's yeah. in the middle of that offensive line. He is a character, and he's a physical character, too. And he's feisty. Yes, and look, he at is. look at that. Look at this. He's got his own little dance moves. That's the second time in this game he did it. <laughs> and you know what? It, it's just not all, not all effect. When he gets a chance to lay you out, he lays you out. So first and five. LSU almost jumped again. Devontae Smith in motion. Mac Jones rolls with a throwback screen. And that's played well by Jacoby Stevens. Yeah, Jacoby Stevens had a couple hits, one penalty, but smartly snuffed this one out. Motion again. People going different ways. Play action pass. Try to get the screen to nod. You know, nope, nope. We're watching number 22. That's a good idea. So second down and 10. Forrestal, the tight end in motion, sets in the backfield for Alabama. Najee Harris weaving his way through, close to another first down, about a yard shy. Well, as I said, those guys up front, they believe they're the best offensive line in college football. It'd be hard to argue. They're veterans. They've got a package. They believe it, and they've got a lot of weapons. This time, LSU equal to the task. Jacoby Stevens again. Leading the charge on Aji Harris. And will bring up third down and one. And Logan also in there from his tackle spot. I think it brings up fourth down. And fourth one. down, beg your pardon. Most first quarter points against LSU. And it's Saban era. Fourth down and a yard going for more. They don't go on fourth down very often. This is almost two yards. Billingsley in motion. The throw is out to Billingsley for an easy first down. And Derek Stingley has to bring him down, but he's going to move the chains again. Look at the control that Billingsley handles a ball that's slightly behind him. Keeps his eye on it. Wasn't a perfect throw, but in this one, you want to secure the catch. Don't turn up so early. Catches it off his back hip and then gets the first down.
Mac Jones perfect so far. This season or this game? <laughs> Just this game, but he's close to perfect on the season. He wants more right here. Going to go long, got a wide open touchdown to Billingsley. <laughs> well, Devontae, that was too easy. Yeah, Devontae Smith goes from left to right, and Billingsley goes from right to left. They all cover number six. Watch the... This one goes across. Was it Mechie? Yes, it was Mechie. Excuse me. Number eight. Watch Mechie go one way, and then Billingsley comes the other way. Three go with Mechie. No one goes with Billingsley. And as a quarterback, you've got to be thinking, this guy's so wide open, just don't yeah. mess this up. Before he caught it, I go, then he got it. <laughs> and the extra point is good. So another good-looking drive by Alabama. They didn't have to go far after the short punt. 47 yards in five plays. Mac Jones throws his 24th touchdown pass of the season. It's all tied right now in Death Valley. When in Baton Rouge, 21 to nothing, top-ranked Alabama, and we still got 227 remaining in the first quarter. Well, we said in the open that LSU wanted to believe but needed something good to happen. Bama said, we want to squash them fast, <laughs> and they're squashing them fast. Handled kick and now they'll have to return it. Did simply call fair catch Boutte or did his knee go down? Either rate, not good for LSU. And the ball will be placed there. If he fair catches it, it'll go to the 25. If he would have caught it. Now there's yep, a fair catch. I didn't see it the first time. It, it wasn't very long. One time, half the away. Gave a but fair once catch you drop it, that's Murphy where the ball, ball stays. Possessed it. By roll, the ball is dead where he possessed it. First down. It's another mistake this LSU team has made. They seem little. Third and fourth down, they, they add don't up, make though. it. You know, they add up. Yes. Little, little, little. And then a big mistake on the long touchdown pass. Shake punt. Man, they've done a lot of little things that are really adding up. And you just can't do that against a team that's good. Well, not even the team that's good. They, they're three and four because they're making mistakes, but it gets really bad against a team this good, like 21 points. So now the LSU offense backed up near their own goal line. Davis Price with Finley right at the goal line. On a first down from the five. And Lee throws complete. And it's going to be close to a first down to Kirkland. Well, you, you can't help but watch T.J. Finley throw the ball and see the potential of why he got a lot of scholarships. Uh -huh. I mean, he got a big time arm, has to grow into his body a bit. He's a big, big kid. Still, you know, he had to lose weight. Now he's got to get used to that weight, get a little bit more mobile in the pocket, but you see his potential. Second down, less than one. And they pick it up. As we get another update in New York, Adam Zucker. Zuck. All right, Ness, it just ended a meeting of 9-0 darlings that they put together midweek. BYU down five as time expires. Zach Wilson to Dax Milne, and the Coastal Carolina defense meets him just shy of the goal line. Shades of Rams, Titans, the shots are 10-0. <laughs> wow. What a win. The teal comes up big. Finley, pressure coming from behind, going long. Into double coverage, incomplete. Patrick Sutan had the coverage Whoa. on Jotre Kirkland. I thought he got a piece of him, and that ball was going and being catchable. Like to take another look at that one. Well, the crowd agrees with you, Gary. What crowd? No, well, there's a few here. There's quite a few. <laughs> yes. Nice design route. Got a crossing receiver holding the safety. Got a receiver open. Sutan comes across. Yeah. He hit him, but was it catchable? 
Definitely got an yeah. arm wrapped around him. I don't know if, what? We'll never Surpri know if it's I, catchable. I, I, I'm surprised he got <laughs> away with that one, to tell you the truth. Second and ten, just over a minute to go in the quarter. Davis Price trying to get to the edge and can't. Christian Harris got him after a very short game. He's talking to Pete Golding before the game about his a football team. He said Christian Harris might be our best athlete on defense. Played corner in high school. Had to play a year ago as a true freshman. Look at Pete, defensive coordinator. He said Christian is a spectacular athlete, runs with everyone he needs to cover. You know Christian is licking his chops in this game because he's a Baton Rouge native playing in his hometown. Harris a double clutch, got the pass complete. Tough tackle there, Boutte. He's going to be really close to the first down. And a flag. Personal foul, rough in the passer, defense number eight. 15 yard penalty added to the <laughs> run, first down. Well, I guess Christian was a little too excited playing at home. <laughs> we built you up there. He had a free rush. I'll tell you, it's the same look. LSU showed that they were vulnerable to these six man fronts rushing three or four different guys each time and that's two and a half step that's a clear roughing the passer so that puts the ball out to the 42 yard line <laughs> finley quick crossing route Intended for Davis Price in and out of his hands. Dylan Moses was right there with him. I think as uh, TJ grows up, he's going to understand. I threw that one a little too hard. That had a little bit too much mustard on it. Especially for something that was only about seven yards away from I, him. I had a coach young in my NFL career there said, when those guys are coming across like that, throw an egg, not a rock. Something easy to catch. <laughs> well, that time he threw another pretty good rock yep you can throw a rock to the outside those are catchable freshman to freshman Boutte on the receiving end might be one more play before the end of the quarter and it'll be a first down quarterback sneak for tj finley so lsu's got a lot of work to do but they're picking away a little bit as they did on their opening drive End of the first quarter, Alabama 21, LSU nothing. We'll return to Baton Rouge after this message and a word from your local station. Home Depot SEC on CBS heads into quarter number two here in Baton Rouge and the hometown Tigers trailing top ranked Alabama 21 to nothing. They do have a first down to open up the quarter at the Alabama 44-yard line. Davis Price with Finley in the LSU backfield. Finley to throw, rifles it down the middle. On his way is Keyshawn Boutte, touchdown. That's the way you start the second quarter. And the key word was rifle, and Butte was wide open and delivered perfectly on this play. Bottom of the screen right here, right down the slot. Safety's coming up on the play, and before the opposite safety battle can get there, the ball is there. But did he drop the ball too soon? Oh, no. That would be the ultimate problem. They're going to take a look at this, I think. Are they? Did the ball go out too too early? I think it did, Ness. Oh, my goodness. He did the Julio Jones uh, lean into the tape as a trackster, and he left the ball behind him. I remember Tyron Matthew doing that in the SEC championship game, too. No. Nope. Is it going to be replayed? Apparently not. Extra point is up and good. They've ruled it a touchdown on the field. Gene Steratore is with us. We'll get another look from Pilot Cam right here. Gene, you take over. You know, Brad, I know we've all said this and seen this happen wow. before, and unfortunately in this situation, this ball is clearly out of the runner's possession before it breaks the goal line. 
Uh, that this, would not be a touchdown if they would have reviewed it. Isn't this a replay official mistake, though, Gene? I mean, it's close either way. Yeah. It, yes, Gary. It, it would be, an, uh, you know, you want replay to initiate a review on this, uh, and they would have to buzz down. Uh, we can see the back judge at the top of the screen from our pylon cam straddling the goal line. Right. This happens in such a blur for him that uh, I'm sure he had some apprehension there. Uh, but this ball looks clearly out, guys. Our producer, Craig Silver, is telling us from the truck it was reviewed. It was reviewed that quickly. Extra point was kicked. It's a 44-yard touchdown. And strange things continue to happen in Death Valley on a Saturday night. 21-7. To give you a different pylon cam look. <laughs> and okay, this is a different angle. And here comes the ball right into your stomach. And it hits the pylon, and that's about all we can say about it. Remember, that camera is on the goal line, and the ball is flying toward it on the play. Well, if that wouldn't have been a touchdown. Kayshawn's Boutte would have gotten kicked by the LSU coaches on the sideline. Well, it was such a perfect play, but you got to finish the play. Yeah. So Alabama back to work with a two touchdown lead. So who had the worst play on that one? The replay official or, or Boutte? <laughs> hey, we all got problems. Brian Robinson. And he's going to go for about six. Gabriel Cox in on the stop for the Tigers. What a player he is. Yeah, if you turn on the tape, he, he covered Jaden Wiedemeyer, the tight end for AM, all over the field. And if an NFL team would turn on that tape, they'll see a future star in the NFL. Two tight end set for Alabama. On the give is Robinson. Robinson goes out for what looks like a first down. Jamie's got more on Jabril Cox. Yeah, he's a grad transfer from North Dakota State University. He made a decision to either turn pro last spring or to enter the transfer portal. And he was contacted by LSU coaches, one of which was Bo Pelini, who coached against him when he was at Youngstown State. And Cox was at NDSU. He knew the program he was coming from and knew that he was the kind of defensive leader Pelini needed in this defense. Well, he only went 45-1 and one for North Dakota State as they won three championships when he was there. Mac Jones going deep. Devante Smith is gone. Touchdown, Alabama. How many times have we said that this year? A lot. Again, the receivers for Alabama, it's something that Sarkeesian M.O. They like to take their receivers and switch their routes. Watch how the inside guy goes outside and the outside guy comes inside and it's a bust by LSU. We've seen it before. It's worked before against other teams just like that. One guy on the slot, Devontae Smith, goes to the outside, and it seems to confuse the defensive backs. Well, number six has confused a lot of defensive backs this year. And Reichert in for the point after. He Ninth touchdown in the last four games for that guy. And he didn't confuse Mac Jones. He knew he'd be open, and he's nine for nine for 174 yards already. And two touchdowns. And for this guy, his 13th touchdown catch of the year from 65 yards out. Only took Alabama three plays and... A minute 17 seconds to add out another touchdown as they lead 28 to 7 with 13 36 to go in the first half. Chase Allen to kick off for the tie. And taking it after five is Boutte, who caught what we thought was a touchdown pass and then didn't think it was a touchdown pass. And we're going to take you back to that play. And Gene Steratore is with us at the end of this play. 
You know what, guys? After taking looks at other angles, after we see the ball is clearly fumbled, what we failed to see in a few replays was Yontre Kirkland, number 13, right there, picking the football up in the end zone as it lay there. And that was in the immediate recovery after. So that is why the uh, office in the SEC confirmed that so quickly, and we give them credit for that confirmation for sure. Would, right. would that be immediate, though, Gene, in your opinion? Was that immediate? Because it seemed to lay there for a while. Yes, Gary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I would think that that would be enough for immediate. Yes, sir. So is it going to go as a 43-yard completion and a one-yard touchdown for Kirkland? Uh, how, do they, how do they rule that one? Well, Kirkland gets the touchdown. There's no doubt about that. That's probably how it's going to go in the official books. Straighten all that stuff out at halftime. Anyway, heads up by Kirkland. And you're down to a bunch of receivers that basically didn't even play in this game last year. Keep your head in the game. Finley. Scans a field, rifles it down the middle, and Sertan is all wrapped up with Jenkins incomplete, and Jenkins still down. I think it was the hit from Daniel Wright, though, that has Jenkins down. Coming from the safety spot, watch number three come across, helmet to helmet on Jenkins right there. It is. It's Daniel Wright that yep. made the hit. I don't three. know that it was helmet to helmet, but personal it did. foul targeting defense yep. number three. Okay, it was. The previous play is under further review. I thought he got him in the helmet there, Ness, as he, as he came down. Receiver goes down. Helmet, shoulder pad to the helmet. It's going to be close, isn't it? Yeah, I thought close. it was his shoulder, but yep. he did get him in the helmet. Yep. Neck and head injury to a defenseless player. It's close. First things first, Uri Jenkins, who was motionless on the field for a while, is up and into the tent. So that is great news in of itself. And Daniel Wright has been ejected as the targeting was upheld while we were in that timeout to check on Jenkins. Right. During that timeout, that three four five six people around him got him up and that was dangerous that's why that rules in there yeah. just for that play, hit right there it was a big sigh of relief up here with all of us with yes. everybody that's in the stadium and number three's night is done he can stay on the sideline new rule this year yep so with the penalty that moves it to the 46 yard line Jay Finley is stunned by the Alabama front. He got the pass away, but it's incomplete. That one intended for Kirkland. And Josh Job was there defensively. You can see what happens. Alabama now trying to do all the different moves up front to throw this pass blocking off. And that time, frees up a defender. You get in there, Borchi. Does a good job. TJ's good to get that pass off in that situation. He did that numerous times against AM and then he had the one fatal one at the end of the game. John Emery off the left side and a nice run by Emery. A blocker in front. John Emery gonna take it to the house. Touchdown, LSU. run of maybe the year for LSU offensively and exactly what they needed to stay in this football game not only a score that's number one blocked very well up front Rosenthal number 51 on the edge left tackle does his job and then downfield Pute does a great job of blocking and keeping that lane open to get to the end zone by far the longest run of the year for John Emery extra point is up and good both teams with quick striking offenses, and that's something LSU has been looking for. Something to celebrate about a little bit on that sideline. 69-yard drive. Emory does the touchdown to cut the lead ahead. On CBS, Simone Missick is back as Judge Lola Carmichael. It's her court and her rules. CBS original series all rise. 
New episode Monday at 9, 8 central on CBS. So the LSU offense has stepped up and holding their own. It's the defense that needs to stop. Four possessions, four touchdowns for Alabama. And Alabama's fifth possession will start from the 25-yard line. And this time, Ed Ingram along with number 51. Watch Ingram get the block on Harris. Reaches out one side, helps, gets to Harris the second level, gets him once, and then gets him again to clean him up for the touchdown run. Great job by number 70, Ingram. Got to feel good for John Emery, too, because they've been struggling on the ground. Ty Davis Price, for the most part, has been their starter. Emery, around 200 yards rushing a season ago. But the 14 points allowed tonight here in the first half. Alabama, as I mentioned earlier, hadn't given up many points in the last 18 quarters. Here's Najee Harris, who's got two scores tonight. A little hesitation move, got about six. After the 31, where Eli Ricks brought him down. So can this LSU defense give the ball back in a 14-point game? We had the weird touchdown there in the end zone on yep. the, the ball being dropped. L LSU recovers it. Then they get the great runs to stay in the game, but they need to stop to really believe. Robinson and Harris both in the backfield. Now Robinson clears out. Jones looked at him and now throws back the other way. What a catch by Najee Harris. And he's still going, and he got a first down. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, it was designed the whole way, throwback screen the whole way, but he had to find Najee. There was a lot of traffic for number 22 to kind of maneuver his way through. Fake, roll out to the right, trying to get it to him, trying to get it to him. Finally, I see him, and as you say, he snaps it off and then breaks a couple tackles for the first down. Najee Harris just pinned that in his left forearm. <laughs> yes. And he's got some pretty good-sized forearms, and he's got a first down. There's the first 10 pass attempts for Mac Jones, including two more touchdowns. Plenty of time here. Deep for Devontae Smith in stride again, and goodbye again. Devontae Smith touchdown. You run out of things to say about that combination. Well, it's the play they've been running all year again. They fake the block, does Devontae, and then he wheels down the sideline. Fake the block and go to the outside. Looks like it's going to be a wide receiver screen. Nope. And he bleats. Number 25 flat again. Why isn't it on Stingley? Why is Stingley not inside playing against the Devontae? We yes. had heard that it was going to be 24. In coverage, but they have been able to get Devontae Smith wherever they want. Well, there's Derek Stingley. It's part of the reason he wasn't on the end of that play. But yeah, Bo Pelini told us we'll try to match 24 with six as much as we can. And now it's Derek Stingley, the All American as a freshman a year ago, who's on the turf for LSU. Yeah, but back to back plays, they had flat on Devontae Smith, and he's burned them for two touchdowns. That ankle that was bothering Stingley earlier in the year, maybe he hurt it again. No problem at the beginning. He's got Mechie to the outside, but right at the end of this, right at the end, watch him run into, I think he actually runs into Jacoby Stevens, number seven, his own player, and that's where he turns the ankle. Good. Extra points as Derek Stingley goes good. Five possessions for Alabama, five touchdowns. A 65 and a 61 yard scoring toss to Devontae Smith from Mac Jones. It's 35 14. Up, Gary, the last two drives for Alabama. Three plays 75 yards in a minute 18. Three plays 75 yards in a minute 17. 65-yard touchdown to Devontae Smith and a 61-yard touchdown to Devontae Smith. Well, all year, you know, if you look at Alabama for the whole season, when they get the ball, if you say how many yards that they possibly can gain, like they get the ball on the 50, they can possibly gain 50 yards. They've been gaining 70% of the total yards possible all year. Tonight, 100% so far. Tomorrow, it's an NFL on CBS doubleheader. Early action, full of playoff implications. Browns take on the Titans. That's followed by the Eagles taking on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Jim, Tony, and Tracy will have that one. It all starts at noon Eastern. JB and the guys on the NFL today. Tomorrow, 
NFL on CBS. Well, nothing but to do if you're LSU and you're on offense is we got to score again. Yep. Better score every time you have it if you can because Alabama is. Yep. And that guy has been unbelievable well, this year. We said there's a lot of bigs, the big defensive line, the big offensive line, the corners, but the big three tonight is showing up, aren't they? Yep. Smith, Harris, and Jones. Sounds like a law firm or an old, old Western. John Emery, who had a touchdown the last time he touched it, just rumbles out to the 45-yard line. And again, when I said that this LSU team, it was loosened up with their passing attack, but could they run the ball a little bit? Good block that time by Gilbert, number two, coming inside to get that block and gash the Alabama defense. The best game John Emery's had in a long time. 76 yards and a touchdown. And a first down at the 45-yard line. Kirkland in motion. Backpedaling is Finley. And have to get rid of it, and finally does. Byron Young was giving chase. Just the end of that play. Our truck has been able to blow that play up. Watch right in the middle of the screen. It's going to get bigger for you. Stingley does run into Jacoby Stevens. Got kind of leg whipped by his own guy as we check in with Jamie. Yes, yeah, Stingley Jr. is in the tent for quite some time. I'll say the equipment manager for LSU went in there to assist him. He is out of the tent now and on the bike, but he does look really in pain still on the bike. He's moving that bike about as fast as I do <laughs> right now. <laughs> At the ten and a half minute mark. I'm curious though that he's not matching up against Smith on the inside. Aren't, aren't you? It's costing. He might be done matching up with him all night. Who knows? It's a throw, throw and a good one to Tory Carter. Tory Carter not played the last two games. He's their best blocking H back with Gilbert and Carter. They're basically playing two tight ends in the game the whole time, and this time he catches at Alabama defense, finds the seam, and Helms gets there late. Nice gain to the forty. Play action, Finley off his back foot, fires, and it's knocked down by Sertan, intended for Boutte. Well, T.J. Finley's had a lot of this. Rushers in his face, it's dangerous throwing that, but you lay it up for your receiver, 50-50 ball, and Sertan keeps his hand in there the whole way, never panics. Second down at 10. At the Bama 40. Emory hit and dropped for a loss this time. Christian Harris. Who had a personal foul earlier on a roughing the passer, and he just came up with a tackle for loss of about four. And he hit that so quick. He saw the action, and that's where his athletic ability just got into that backfield and made that play. Let's look now how Alabama tries to rush on this third and long. They'll show a six-man front and give that LSU defense four down linemen. The two linebackers look like they're going to play real safe this time and drop into zone. LSU has been able to avoid third down and this far, thus far, but this is a big one. Third and 14. Pressure coming up the middle. The ball is out. Finley trying to get back on top of it and does, but it's going to be fourth down as he had it stripped out of there by Christian Barmore. It was number 58 coming in. Probably Alabama's best inside pass rusher. Just able to reach around and get his right hand on the football when T.J. Finley. See how he's waving it, though? That's what they're trying to get him to understand. The importance of that football when you move up in the pocket, keep both hands on the football. He had that fumble earlier for a touchdown this year against Auburn. A play similar to that. Back by Rosenberg's last punt was not a good one. This one much better. Camps Devontae Smith under a fair catch at the 10 yard line. And now we're going to do Projects Smarter presented by the Home Depot. What they like to do for Alabama is they like to bring those receivers across the field. And one time when you run one receiver that is a threat and then you bring the tight end the other way, it crosses them up. This time on the deep route, they cross the receivers 
and cross the secondary up and then one more time on the quick screen fake you cross those receivers three touchdowns on three interchange routes by the Alabama receivers. Little hesitation for Najee Harris in the backfield and then goes out for four or five. This game a year ago is when probably Joe Burrow locked up the Heisman Trophy in this game. Just uh, you know that Kyle Trask had a good game in front of us. Mac Jones this year so far 11 for 11 243 yards and three touchdowns. And all their drives have resulted in touchdowns. Najee Harris has the other two. Jones throws on a crosser. It's Mechie. And Mechie's going to be close to a first down. By the way, Joe Burrow underwent surgery this week. And Joe, we want to wish you the best in your rehab. I uh, was in touch with his dad, Jimmy, this morning. And uh, Joe's doing okay. He's already getting ready to start working out. That knee surgery is not fun, but Joe will fight through it, no doubt. Joe was having a sensational season for the Bengals before he was hurt a few weeks ago. Here's a call. Holding, offense number 70. The penalty's half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. And we're talking about the season Joe had last year and taking this team to an undefeated season, the national championship and the Heisman Trophy. And how about the comparison for these two dudes? Pretty close. Well, both of them had a lot of weapons. I mean, the three NFL receivers they had with Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Marshall. Remember, Alabama had the big three last yeah. year, and they still got a big one right now in Devontae. Two good running backs they had. Here's Jones from his own end zone. He's still perfect. And by the way, you can add three more touchdowns to those numbers we just showed you. That was coming into the game. But you know what else they both had? Protection. Yeah. And watch this Alabama offensive line protect their quarterback. No one within four yards of him as he steps into the throw. So it's 12 for 12 for 255 and three right now for Mac Jones. As there you look at the big eaters up front that protect him and have done a beautiful job of it again tonight. This time trying to open a hole for Najee Harris and that was closed pretty well by Jacqueline Roy. Short game. The toughest thing against Alabama with this veteran big offensive line is getting a tackle for a loss. And it seems that to me, that's what LSU needs to get him behind the chains a little bit. Get a tackle for a loss or a sack, but it's not easy. They're just good at what they do. Good to see Stingley back in the game. I'm not sure if he's 100%, kind of limping out there, but nonetheless, he's given it a go. Career high for Mac Jones, perfect on 12 throws. Looking for number 13 right here. And in and out of the hands of Mechie incomplete. As Eli Ricks broke that one up, so that stops the perfect night for Mac Jones. But he hit his receiver right on the hands. There's good, good defensive play. We were here for the Mississippi State game. Eli Ricks was playing his first game as a true freshman. He's gotten better. This whole secondary has gotten better. But tonight, they've met their match. It's one thing covering receivers at AM. You know, they've lost a lot of receivers, and they were able to pretty much control the receivers for AM. Not tonight. Not yeah. tonight at all. We got flags all over the place again on third down. Let's see which side's the guilty party this time. Offside defense number 43. Jumping into the neutral zone, causing a reaction. Five yard penalty, still third down. Still third down and about five. You saw that graphic come up that Alabama's 0 for 1 on third down conversions. Yeah. Well, that's because they haven't gotten a third down except once. 35 points and only one attempt on third down. That's crazy. Now they got a third and five. If LSU can hold off and not jump offside, they can at least try to make Mac Jones and Alabama earn this one. Jones back to the completion now to Devontae Smith. Smith in the open field trying to outrun everybody. Stingley giving chase. He'll bring him down, but not before he's to the 25-yard line. Remember a year ago when they had Henry Ruggs and Jalen Waddell? They said Devontae Smith matched up this time against Stingley. He's the route runner. He's the slower of yeah, the guys. Come on. Watch him run away from everybody right here. There's a guy that came back. Everybody thought, even being included, thought he might just opt for the NFL last year. He has helped himself coming back this year. Another 200-yard game 
That's his fourth of his career. And we're not even at halftime. Najee Harris on the toss sweep, and Najee's got it down inside the 20. Jabril Cox made the tackle. As we're under six minutes in the half. Well, against Ole Miss, Alabama put seven over 700 yards against that defense. Only one possession they didn't score a touchdown. They're off to even a better start here tonight. And Najee down on one knee at the end of the play. He was grimacing a little bit as he hit the turf. And I think he just got the wind knocked out of him, but uh, we'll wait and see. He got up and then took a knee. As he picked up seven on this carry. And he took a shot in sure the did. lower extremities. Let's yep. put it that way. Eighty five yards on 12 carries, including touchdowns number 18 and 19 on the ground this year. And on his way up. A little more than the wind knocked out if you've ever had that happen to you. Try to bounce around. Now we head to the sideline. And Brian Robinson will probably come in to take his spot. He doesn't want out of the no, game. No, he, he's got to come out for a play. Najee, you've been on a knee over there for two minutes. You've got to come <laughs> out for a second. <laughs> So the two penalties, remember the early drive on third down, LSU jumps off and gives them a first down. Yeah. And then third and long, they jump off to make it third and medium and picked up by the easy throw by Mac to Devontae Smith. Yeah, the medium became a 49-yard gain. And here is Brian Robinson. Cuts up, and he's got the first down at the 15-yard line. Quarterback comparison so far. Now you got a freshman on one side, you got a veteran on the other side who's only missed one throw, and that was in the hands of his receiver before it was popped out by the LSU defense. And TJ Finley's had a good game. Yeah. yeah this, this, it, it, you know, it, you got to have some defense. I said, you know, to, to play with Alabama, you better score, but you got to have a couple stops to help your offense. Yeah, get off the field yes. once in a while. Slade Bolden in motion. It's Najee Harris back in there after one playoff with one of his patented hurdles as he gets down around the 11 yard line. Landon Dickerson being strong at the point, the center for Alabama. He also pulls. Watch him get out on this one around. He and Deontay Brown. Devontae, Deontay Brown, number 65, and Dickerson get out on that corner. Your center's able to do that play tough strong at the point of attack and still get around the corner Alabama can get a first down at the five yard line it's second down and seven from the 12 Mac Jones has a look to the sideline has a word with Najee Harris and then gives it to him and no game this time a shot by the LSU defense to bring him down Baskerville was there so was Devon Clark and it's third down and seven well, at least they got him to third down a couple times on this drive, but again is carried farther than 75 yards. Steve Sarkeesian, just about everything he dials up over there with that pen and, and what is worked. If you're, if you're LSU, do you bring the house and try to get it out of Mac Jones' hands quicker than he wants to? Billingsley in there basically is a wide receiver again to the bottom of your screen. Jones. Scans the field, throws incomplete intended for Harris, and it'll be fourth down. Damone Clark, number 18, did a good job that time. I think Najee Harris was trying to get inside. They gave the illusion that they were going to run the wheel route. Watch when he tries to cut inside. It's stopped, and he has to go back outside. There's really no throw room to make the throw. Alabama doesn't kick a lot of field goals because they score so many touchdowns, but this guy hasn't missed yet this year. Well, record. Eight for eight on the year. He'll try 30 yard attempts to add to the Alabama lead, and he's got it. Will Reichard tacks three more on for Alabama, 38 to 14.
coming up in about three minutes and 20 seconds. The Geico halftime report. Adam and the guys will be along with highlights, first half analysis, games that uh, went on before us or that are still going on. So a 78 yard drive that time in 11 plays for Alabama, a little over five minutes, but they did have to settle for just three that time after being perfect on their touchdown drives. Every other possession they had so far in this half. For the best UEFA Champions League coverage, start your match days at 2 Eastern with UEFA Champions League today, followed by Nico Cantor and the Galazzo Show at 3 on CBS Sports Network and CBS All Access. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratore, as you look in on Tiger Stadium, Death Valley and Baton Rouge with 3.20 remaining in the half. LSU has one timeout yet to work with as their offense starts at the 25 again. Davis Price for about five. So think of your LSU. You lose 10 starters on offense, including a Heisman Trophy quarterback, one of the great running backs we've seen, three NFL receivers. You go with a true freshman quarterback, you lose your starting quarterback, and you put up 225 yards on Alabama in the first half. Yeah. But the other team's got over 400 yards on you. Second down and five. Finley steps up and lays it out long. Broken up. Incomplete. Nice job defensively by Helms back there. Gary was talking about this earlier. You know, we had Joe Burrow thrown to Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, Thaddeus Moss, Clyde Edwards Elair. Take a look at the replay, and he might have gotten away with a right hand on the jersey there. But when you consider what LSU was playing with compared to last year, we put this together. A total of 10 yards all by Davis Price offensively and 19 tackles on defense led by Jacoby Stevens. That's what they have that they're playing with tonight compared to last year. Third and five. Look out, TJ. Throws complete. Oh, he's out of bounds. He intended for Gilbert. Just couldn't get his foot down on the sideline. So a week ago, Coach Ogeron really got on T.J. Finley. And what he wanted to do when he says, when you see that pressure, go up in the pocket. Don't move back. He said a little tough coaching for him. But it seems to me that it's worked so far. T.J., listen to the coach, doing it what you should do, moving up in the pocket. He would have loved to at least gotten a couple of first downs to use some more clock as it is. Von Rosenberg set to punt on fourth and five, and there's still two and a half minutes left. Again, Devontae Smith just wants to clear everybody out. It's down to around the 42, I think, is where they're going to put it. So it's not that long a field again for this Alabama no, offense, no, and they've got three timeouts left. Last week, a little, little tough love from the coach. Gets hit, kind of lobs the ball up for a pick six. Comes to the sideline, and Coach O says, you got a bright future, but you got to take care of that football. That thing's pressure. I want to play. you got to grow. you got to get better. And when you get that pressure, move up in the pocket. And I think it worked. He's had a good night tonight. Yep, so far. Let's see what Alabama does now. Plenty of time to work and all of their timeouts remaining. Najee Harris got through the first wave and picked up almost nine. You get a pulling this time from the, this offensive line. And also, Miller Forrestal, number 87, comes in from the wide formation, lines up at H-back, and fits in for the block. Good job by number 87. You know, this is an ongoing college football record of 35 points or more in now 22 straight games. And were, by the way, not till halftime yet. Najee Harris into the secondary, down to the 35-yard line. Lamone Clark and Stingley brought him down, but Najee rumbling towards 100 yards. In fact, he's over 100 yards already with 119. So think about this. You're running back, as we call it sometimes, a week, the big three, 100 yards in the first half. Your quarterback, 300 yards passing in the first half, and your receiver, 200 yards receiving in the first half. 
100, 200, and 300. That's a big three. You got it. Time out, 132 till halftime. We love that. Dolly Parton Christmas is coming up tomorrow. Gather the family around for a little holiday cheer as only Dolly can deliver. Mac Jones, a little bit of pressure this time, rifles it across the middle to Mechie, and a first down at the 20. Well, the veteran, it's hard to believe, veteran his second year playing. Remember last year, but he understands, move up in the pocket, find your next guy. He wanted to go to the left side to Smith. Stingley had him covered, come to your next guy. That's one thing about Mac Jones. He is a quick decision maker in the pocket. Yeah, he is. He and Kyle Trask are really good at that. Kyle Trask was really good in game one of our doubleheader today. Mac Jones is not disappointing here in the nightcap. Looking for more. Oh, wow, the he missed, missed a guy. More <laughs> Forrestall. Had he been able to put that on him, he probably would have gotten to the end zone. Yeah. I think, I think Miller's going to come back to the quarterback and say, Mac, you hit everybody in stride for a touchdown. <laughs> but not me. But not me. I'm, I'm six foot six. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, I had a touchdown right there. I missed a couple games with a bad shoulder yes. and a bad ankle, and here I am wide open, and you missed me. <laughs> Steve Sarkeesian calls Forrest all the glue of our offense, the way he blocks and the way he is as a receiver. Jones back to throw, fires, incomplete intended for Najee Harris. That was pretty good coverage back there. Three guys around number 22, and it's third down to 10. There's the big three that Gary was talking about. That's that's pretty big. Yep. They took one yard away from Dante, the official scores, but uh, he'll be over 200 sometime in this game. Got a roundup. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> That was one of those point fives. Yes. Third down at 10. At the 20. Jones goes to the end zone. Oh, what a catch! Devontae Smith, touchdown Alabama. Holy cow. Okay. This is jaw dropping. Yeah. I you don't even know what to say sometimes. Good coverage, great coverage. The one handed the two. Unbelievable. Well, he got his 200 back in fashion, didn't he? What a catch. We've seen him do this for basically three years, but Holy they cow. just they just get better. And another touchdown pass. For Mac Jones, another one for number six, his third of the night. You know, that that works at any level. I mean, you're covered that much in any, you can go to NFL and be covered that closely. A ball like that, these spectacular catches, and just add this one to a spectacular career. Well, there was one that won a championship for him, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And then these are some of the other ones we've seen over the years. And add this one to the... Yeah, just put it on the highlight reel and add to it and then send the Bolitnikoff award to him right now, will you? Somebody just send the Bolitnikoff award. When that award ball to was Tuscaloosa. thrown, I thought it was out of the end zone. I did too. I thought it was going into the first row of the seats. Oh, boy. That's something special to watch. I'll tell you, you know, I've watched him and watched him and watched him. And the only comparison I have to any player I've ever seen is Lynn Swan. Yeah, me too. We right? made that comparison a year ago. I just think on some of these. He's acrobatic. He's effortless runner. Swanee's probably watching too. Swanee, we, that, that's a compliment to you and to Devontae, Jeez, by the way. Yes, one of the greatest players that ever played in the NFL. He was a one hopper taken and put down at the 23 yard line, Josh Williams. Well, he's from Amy, Alabama, about 60 miles from here, one that got out of here and went to Tuscaloosa. Louisiana native. 
He likes the food around here. He likes all of that, and he's back near home, and he is having himself a time. Yeah, one of six contributing players from the state of Louisiana for this Alabama football team. Yeah, we mentioned Christian Harris, Dylan Moses earlier. But, wow, what a special guy to watch. Well, he had five touchdown catches right in one of our games yep. last year. Now he's got three. Big arm quarterback again having trouble with that short pass to the running back. Tried to take something off of it, was not accurate enough for Emory. Had him. So Mac Jones, a four touchdown first half. Devontae Smith, a three touchdown, 219 yard first half. With 39 seconds to go in the half. Keep it on the ground. Emory who had a long touchdown run earlier. Good run here again before Alabama can swarm him under. LSU out of timeouts. Trying to line up in a hurry here to see if they can get him something in the last 20 seconds. Third down, a long yard. And in and out of the hands. Uh, the intended receiver. Yeah, now they're going to have to punt. Yeah, Keishon Boutte couldn't hold that. It's fourth and one with 12 seconds left. Devontae Smith says, I'm going back to punt return oh, formation. Yeah. Von Rosenberg, just kick it to me, will you? I haven't done enough in the first half. Von Rosenberg, the oldest player in college football at age 30. After spending six years in the minors as a pitcher. It's at a mile in the air. Devontae Smith can only fair catch it around the 30-yard line. With one play left before halftime. Put him out there, but they didn't let him run with it, no. did they? <laughs> Go out there and catch it and give it a fair catch. What a special first half again. Alabama, seven possessions. This half, six touchdowns, four touchdown passes by Mac Jones, two touchdown runs by Najee Harris, and then you chip in a field goal by Reichert from 30 yards, and that's where they'll go to the locker room with a 45 to 14 lead. 470 yards in a half of football against LSU. Wow. That's the end of the first half, 45-14. Jamie's first half interview. You can go to Twitter at CBS at the SEC on CBS. And right now we had Adam Zucker and the guys in New York. Zuck. All right, Ness, just incredible. And the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us the third quarter action, second half kickoff coming up between top-ranked Alabama and the Tigers of LSU and Alabama with a 45-14 lead. Good news for LSU. They get the football first to start the third quarter. Did I ever tell you there was a story? These teams had a 9-6 game. One of these. Yeah, I know you did. I, I watched you do that one. It's hard Burn. to believe, isn't it? <laughs> 45 points, by the way, in 84 previous meetings is the most Alabama has ever scored against LSU. Uh, 47 is the most they've ever scored, and they're on pace to uh, do that sometime in this quarter. Keishon Boudet with the return of the kickoff. We welcome you back to the booth. Gary, you know, it's, there comes a point sometimes we just have to go, wow, these guys are like a machine, and it's right. kind of fun to watch, right. but who uh, shuts the machine off? Is there anybody who can do it? I don't know, but I, I, the only thing I think of is first you got to bring a big-time veteran quarterback, and number two, you better have a pass rush. Yeah. You've got to be able to put some pressure on Mac Jones and then take your chances, and it's still going to probably be a 35-point game if you have any chance to be in the football game. You know, with 45 points, they've already scored 35 or more, 22 straight times, which is a record, an ongoing record of their own. And we check in third member of our team, Jamie Erdahl. Well, the good news first from Ed Ogeron, he's been pleased with T.J. Finley and his confidence and stature in the first half. The strange news for me was when Derek Stingley came out of the locker room, he went to approach his head coach as if to have a conversation off camera. He seemed upset. I asked coach if he was okay. He said Stingley is fine. But keep in mind, Stingley and Devontae Smith grew up together nearby, and a member of the LSU coaching staff told me this is a really hard matchup for Derek Stingley Jr. to have to swallow and cover Devontae Smith as often as he is. Yeah, and we've been wondering why he isn't on him more. Right. Two uh, big plays. He wasn't on him. That time, 
the corner blitz, the blitz package again, giving LSU problems. That time it was Josh Job, number 28, coming from the edge. So it forces an immediate third and long for the LSU offense as we open the third quarter. 0 for 3 since a 2 for 4 start with their down conversions. Finley, heavy pressure again, steps up, rolls to throw, and incomplete. It was intended for Jenkins, and it's three and out. That's that look, that three down linemen, three different, what, like a defensive back and two linebackers up there. They put three to one side, three to the other, and you don't know which four are coming, or five or six. And sometimes they'll drop all of them and bring a safety. So it's a really, really package, good package. Everybody does it a little bit, but LSU is struggling blocking. Here they are. Dan Rosenberg to kick. Slade Bolden is back this time for the tide. He backpedals. Yeah, I like, I like that change up, by the way, right there. Get Devontae Smith. You don't want to get him hurt, you know, on a putt right now in this football game. We even wonder how much more. I'm sure he will play. Yeah. But how much more will you feature him in this football game? He says at least two more series if he puts those two <laughs> yes, fingers up. Exactly. Take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC standings. If you missed it earlier, Florida's already punched their ticket to Atlanta. Alabama is halfway to punching theirs, and we'll have quite a battle December 19th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Just to continue to marvel at this Alabama offense, remember they had four first-round picks off their offense in the NFL draft last year. Here's a toss sweep to Najee Harris, who already has a 100-plus yard night, and he's got nine more out to the 34 as you take a look at the first half trends trending upward mac jones with four touchdown passes yes. went 12 for 12 to start Devonte his fourth career game over 200 receiving and tj finley did play badly as uh, jamie said when she talked to the coach but they're in a big hole now and now they face the alabama offense again with their opening march of the third quarter and Najee harris has got a first down So Harris on the night with 130 yards on 19 carries. Touchdowns number 18 and 19 on the ground. That continues to lead college football. One of the weapons they've got at every position. Jones pulls it away from him, rolls to throw on the run and it's going to be out of bounds i think to Devonte smith and we get a jeep update in new york here's adam zucker Zuck. hey ness you know it was 173 virginia tech but uh clemson just one score after the next getting closer to clinching a spot in the acc title game trevor lawrence to cornell powell first touchdown pass of the game for lawrence he also has two on the ground it's 38 to 10 as they play in the fourth quarter back to you Clemson and Notre Dame will be playing in the ACC championship game, barring some strange and, turnaround there. And both of those teams have that little bit of a formula right there. A veteran quarterback with good defensive lines. Clemson and Notre Dame. Ian Book, who's had a sensational year, doesn't put the numbers up that uh, a Trask would or Mac Jones in this case. But he's a winner. We got a chain problem. We had one of those last week, too. We almost broke one in half. And uh, this one's going to take... One of the offensive linemen for Alabama to straighten <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. Every time, they don't lose often. Every time Alabama loses a game, uh, the revenge of the tide, they come back and find a way to take care of that business. And who knows, maybe Clemson will end up with Alabama at some point. The college football playoffs still have a long ways to go. I think you can start to think about uh, getting revenge for last year's 46 41 tiger win it didn't go over so well in tuscaloosa with the celebrations and joe burrow getting carried off the field and all of that here's a little toss to billingsley got tripped up almost great tackle that time yep baskersville who's coming off a 12 tackle performance a week ago and he does a shoestring job here on billings does number 23 if he doesn't get him billingsley's going to be out there shoot for about 25 yards for sure Third down and seven. Let's see if LSU can get Alabama off the field. Three receivers to the right for Mac Jones. Now everybody looks to the sideline. 
All heads turn at the exact same time. They even do that efficiently. Jones going to go deep. Double coverage out there. And almost caught anyway by Mechie. Had his hands on it, but couldn't hold it. He did. It's a perfect throw. Great coverage by this LSU team that time. It had to be perfect. It was perfect. Split the fenders, put it right in the hands, and Mechie can't come up with it. How about that throw, though? Perfect, really. Yes, it was. So, punting situation. Charlie Scott doesn't get a lot of work for Alabama. Set to punt. And it's going to bounce and hit an Alabama player. So it'll be down right there. With 11.28 remaining. Some of the great moments, coaches and players in the 85 game history between these two teams. So LSU offense, three straight, three and outs. So what do you do to help the young quarterback? You know, he, he's doing a job, but now it's starting to sink. It's starting to go the other direction. I think maybe a little running game might help him a little bit. Can they try to run the ball here? You got Davis Price in there. Emory did a nice job getting a touchdown for him in the first half. One of their best runs, really, of the year. Davis Price out to the 31. Moore brings him down there. Now, last year it was Clyde Edwards Elayer that did most of the damage on the ground and became a great back and now an NFL player. And they don't have that kind of dynamic person in the backfield that, uh, that he brought to the table. Finley. Pull that one down, and now he's going down. Will Anderson will drop him along with Byron Young. I'll tell you that the two linebackers took away the throws, and then when there was nobody to go to, that Alabama pass rush finally pressures the pocket and forces Finley to try to move up in the pocket. Nothing there. Tries to go inside, and well, Bryce Young was right standing right in front of him. Will Anderson came in with more quarterback hurries than anybody else in the SEC, and you and I were talking about him before the game. I said he doesn't really have a lot of sack stats, but he just seems no, to he, always be buzzing around. He does. The he pressures quarterback. the pocket. But Brian Young is. They just got one right after another. He's got he's got two sacks number. tonight. Yep. And they're coming after him again. Throws on the run and right in front of the LSU bench. And a pass intended for Butte. <laughs> So fourth down again. Yeah, that's four three and outs, and those add up, don't they? Yeah. Their defense is over there. They basically sat down, and they're looking up like time to go back in. Haven't even unsnapped their chin straps yet, and they're going back in after Von Rosenberg's punt. Slade Bold and Waits on the other end for it. Clears everybody out of the way. Really haven't had to return anything or really fair catch much because it hasn't been number 38's best punting night. As he knocks that one out of bounds, five minutes into the third quarter. Alabama, big lead, 45-14 here in the third. How often would you... The fraternity does that on a yearly basis. And that's the way the Alabama offense has been running in high gear. Our aerial coverage tonight in Death Valley. Presented by Goodyear. As you look down in at Death Valley and Tiger Stadium, Alabama, first down from the 41. Mac Jones getting a little heat down the middle, competes it to Devontae Smith. And another first down and a pickup of 12 or 13 more. So this is how a veteran handles the pocket. Feel a little pressure, just kind of shuffle around, but don't lose your downfield perspective. Find the seam and then find your third or fourth receiver. And it's, Nice to have your third receiver be number six, <laughs> yeah, right? No kid. Looks to the left, not there. Wheel route wasn't there to Najee. Come back to Devontae Smith. And now Najee Harris sets up behind Mac Jones. From 17 to 23 on the night. And it is Najee Harris. Off the right side and picks up about four. Time now to test your knowledge. With tonight's Aflac trivia question, which is name the only two defending national champions in the Associated Press poll era to finish their next season 
with a losing record. Right now, the defending champions are three and four. And that's back to 1936, that question goes. So they, Next week, they got Florida. The offense will be, we'll see if it's as good as this one, but it's a good offense. Jones, look at the time he's got. And now running out of it, finally, he throws across his body for Najee Harris, and he made the catch. Called the catch, right? And your running back down there scooping it up like a wide receiver. Against your All-American corner. Stingley was the guy that was right there with him. Looking around, looking around, throws across his body, but he's got something he sees. Can he get his hands underneath it? Uh, I don't know. It's close, isn't it? If he didn't, he did a great job acting. Yep. The previous play is under further review. So they're going to take a look at this one. Najee came in with 24 catches on the year and 61 in his career at Alabama. I always like I always like to see the hands on that ball first. Those, those gloves underneath the ball. Can't really tell from there. Looked like the ball went through his gloves and got into his body. Gene Steratore is with us, our rules official. Oh, that one's close, Gene. Uh, that's close. It is close, guys. And when Harris's gloves come together, I think if you keep watching, you'll see the football behind those hands. And it looks to me as if it's hit the ground in that, in that, at that time. Uh, I would go incomplete on this play. Yeah, if the gloves don't grab, if it isn't clear that the gloves are under the ball and with the ball. The assumption sometimes is that the ground helped the catch. Be yep. interesting. If it's incomplete, it's going to bring up third down and six. Again, Alex Moore having a look. Najee's going, I don't care if it's third down and six or not. Just throw it to me again. Right. <laughs> it was called complete on the field. Saban's return to the sideline has been a success so far tonight, 45 to 14. After the coach missed last week's game, had to watch from home. It's pretty funny how he was telling us things were going back home with Miss Terry on one floor and he on another. <laughs> Said there was yelling from two different directions. Right, because as we watch the after review, the rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down at the 43-yard line. Please reset the game clock to eight minutes and 34 seconds. Thank you. Well, the other overturned. thing he said, which may be bad news for everybody in the SEC, is like, you know, being away from it says, you know, it kind of really appreciates knowing what I got there as a coach. Uh -huh. So it could be many more years that Coach Saban's going to be on the sideline. Right. Said to us, I wasn't planning on not coaching for a long time right. anyway, but I did miss it. Yep. So third down and six. Najee comes all the way across the field in motion. Jones down the middle, complete to Forrestal. No, nope. it's Bolden, and Bolden lost the ball. And Stingley picks it up on one hop. Slade Bolden had it, had it stripped out, and LSU's got it back. Slade Bolden did everything right that time. They called to play for him. He's another one of those Louisiana kids that went to Alabama. He runs the option. Breaks inside, catch, now he turns up field, and then from behind is just knocked away by Jay Ward. Good job by Ward, staying with the play, reach around with that left hand and popping that ball loose. You know, they finally get Alabama's offense off the field with a fumble recovery. LSU on offense when we come back. This is Big day of sports on CBS. I've been there, but never seen a game from there. That's yeah, exactly. be fun. Davis Price puts his shoulders forward for about a two-yard game. We approach the midway portion of the third quarter. LSU trying to go with a little tempo. John Emery comes back as Davis Price finally makes it to the sideline. Emery back in at tailback. Gilbert's been quiet since early in the game when he had a couple of catches. This throw to Emery. And just a little bit short of the first down. Dylan Moses made the stop. 
That time he did take a little he off that he one. I was just going to say it. I was, wait, I was just pausing to say it. Like, that time he just kind of flicked it to him. Didn't fire it at him. And quarterback sneak will get LSU the first down. Trying to rip the ball out of there, but big quarterback number 11. Yep. Just wonder, you know, how much longer this Alabama team, you never like to pull your starters and have to put them back in. So how much longer do you keep them in? Remember, this is a compressed season. No off week before the SEC championship. Right. Not as much time between the SEC championship and the first playoff game. Everything is compressed. and You want to keep your starters, especially your important players, as fresh as possible. Finley. Loads and goes on a crossing route again, and there is Gilbert. Did he have it taken away from him? Looked like he had it and then had it ripped out by the Alabama defender. And I think that's Christopher Allen who was covering him. <laughs> and the officials haven't given us a call on it yet. Allen on the tackle, another one of those Louisiana players. Boy, he does seem like he has the football there, doesn't he? Yeah. The three linebackers, Allen plays a little bit defensive end, hybrid linebacker, Allen Harris and Dylan Moses, all from Louisiana. <laughs> you could make the argument he had that ball. The previous play is under further review. <laughs> well, we better share those tonight. Yes. That was a really heads up play. Great hit. And as he hits, he feels the ball right in front of his face, rips it out. Does he have it enough? Gene Steratore is with us, too. I guess you have to think about whether or not Gilbert was down, but I don't or, think his knee ever hit the ground. Could it be forward progress? Could that be the call as he rips, him, rips the ball out? Did it ever well, a really? A couple things on this one, guys. First, we don't know what the rule, I didn't hear the uh, referee announce what the ruling on the field was to clear this up to initially start. I'm assuming that they rule that there was a catch at first and now they're re reviewing to see if he's down by contact, if there was a fumble or something like that. They can't review progress, so we should take progress out of this thought process right now because that's not reviewable. Uh, I think the other thing we look at, which I think we can clear up rather quickly, is it doesn't appear to be a simultaneous catch. Gilbert possesses the footballs, turning up field with his own possession, and then when he gets hit, I think the ball gets knocked loose from a runner then, and now you have a fumble that's never hit the ground, and it appears to me that Alabama recovers that or takes that ball away. Allen takes the ball away before he lands on the ground. And Gene, if you think you're the only one that didn't get a call from the guys on the field we didn't either <laughs> so i'm just telling you <laughs> you did well I, I i will say i love the way G, how organized gene was right yes. there just yeah. one two three four that was that was a laundry list right <laughs> there right. now the ruling on the field was an lsu catch and now we're going to hear the final tally after review the ruling is a fumble recovered by the defense the ball will be placed at the 34-yard line or will be first down. Please reset the game clock to 6 minutes and 58 seconds. It's a big-time play by Christopher Allen right there, no doubt about it. Great hit. First, a great wrap-up just to start things, and then the rip-out. And, Gene, you called it. Yeah, I think the other little nugget, too, is when that official standing next to the referee in the replay starts writing things down on a little note card, that usually <laughs> means they're changing something from what's out on the field. So that might be a little nugget for us as we move forward, guys. <laughs> so back comes the Alabama offense with a first down. At the 34, Jones, quick throw, got it complete. And that's Mechie. Yeah, let's check in with Jamie for a second. Hey, don't challenge Devontae Smith to something unless you want him to take care of business. Jerry Judy, about a half an hour ago, tweeted that he told Smitty he needed 300 receiving yards, and Smitty said, I got you, man. Didn't have to necessarily <laughs> tell him it was going to be in the first half, but, uh, yeah, he took care of business for him tonight. Of course, Judy with the Denver Broncos now, but still watching Alabama in primetime. And Devontae with 231. And that's Brian Robinson. Broke one tackle, cuts it upfield. 
Elliott, and a first down. Elliott had a shot at him, but Robinson ran right through the tackle. Right side of the screen, watch number 11. Beats his block, but can't quite come up with the tackle. And Robinson, who would be starting for about 80% uh, of the teams in the country, if not more, comes in to give Najee Harris a breather, and when he does, he usually does good things. And tonight, Robinson, four carries, 20 yards, got it to the 21 and a first down. And this time, going to lose a yard or two. Ali Gay, that time, didn't let him go. Number 11 made the tackle. And a little bit uh, earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Which was two defending national champions in the AP poll area that finished their next season with losing record. TCU and Ohio State in 39 and 43. Been a while. Yeah. I, wouldn't, a while. I wouldn't have known that one. Right. I mentioned coming into this game, LSU as a defending champ, the biggest underdog in a game of a defending national champion in four decades. Ryan Robinson just tripped up or he might have gotten even more out of that. I think the last team that was that big an underdog in a game was the 91 Georgia Tech team. So almost 40 years. Third down and six. Well, it's been a, obviously a tough night for this LSU team, especially after last year, but you know, Coach O was saying, I've got another great recruiting class coming in. It'll be his third class in a row in the top five. Next year will be really important for this program. You know, one year, okay, is it, you know, one of those things. But two years in a row, people start to look and go, what's going on? Yeah, we're on the national championship. We'll give you a one-off on yep. 2020, but now what? Devontae Smith in motion, a third down at six. Jones is going to throw it out in a flat. And it's Robinson had the first down, I think. With well, his forward progress, Gabriel Cox knocked him back about five yards. But Mac Jones is saying, hey, wait a minute. He got to where he needed to get. And more importantly, the clock keeps going. This is what Alabama wants to do. They're giving the ball to a lot of other people right now. Moving the ball slowly, a little bit of run, short passes. Very patient right now. Let's see if they try to put one more on the board here now. Back in 22, they put up 47. They've got 45, and they do have a first down at the 11-yard line. Najee Harris blasts off the left side and cruises to an Alabama touchdown. His third of the night. Boy, nobody touched him. They went left again behind Leatherwood and Brown. And Forrestal got a nice block on Jacoby Stevens. And one thing Alabama is saying, we don't want to get anybody thrown out right now because that means the first half of next week's game. There's Najee Harris, and that, yeah. you can drive a truck through that thing. Yeah, Leatherwood threw Andre Anthony, number three, out of the picture, and you're right. Forrestal at the end did it, but uh, that side not even come close to making that a tough run. AT&T 5-team pylon cam, as you saw, number 22 just... Cruise control for Najee for his third touchdown of the night. His 20th on the ground this season. As Rikers in for the point after. Up and good. So the most points ever by an Alabama team against an LSU team. And that one was almost too easy. 34 yards, six plays. Najee Harris, his hat trick for the night. Let's take a look at our GMC game changers, Mr. Danielson. Yeah, we talked about in the open that they've got a lot of different ways. We talk about the big three, but it's the offensive line. Yes, they're a big five. That defensive line, they rotate a lot of guys. Farmo made the play on that one. And then the corners. Patrick Sertan had his opportunity. And then Josh Joe from the other side says, uh, yeah, I get an opportunity on the blitz. They've got him stars in all different spots and, and then by, those guys and then the real stars <laughs> <laughs> the offensive stars yeah. all shining again tonight that's yeah it's, it's like the band and then the the, the real guys <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it's usually a quarterback that wins the heisman that's probably this year again 
but if it was a, a player, a non-quarterback, Devontae, Devontae Smith, Smith would be the leader, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt. And a new quarterback, speaking of, as we expected to see two quarterbacks tonight, here comes Max Johnson, the other freshman quarterback. We'll say this, remember for both of them, T.J. Finley and Max Johnson, they, you know, the way things go in college football now, remember this year doesn't count on their eligibility. They both get to play, doesn't matter how many games. They're both got great potential. They're both are going to play college football. Don't know where they both will play, but I think they both have really bright futures. Johnson's going to take off on the run. Considered the better of the two quarterbacks as far as using his legs. But he had a good game, pretty good game last week against Texas A&M, 14 out of 22, threw a touchdown pass. Picked up four there, second and six. And throws on the run, only about a two-yard gain to Gilbert. Good job by Jordan Battle staying with him. It'll bring up third down. It's the three-minute mark of the third. When we talk about that Alabama secondary, this started off a little rough at the beginning of the year. Remember that Ole Miss game when they had trouble corralling that Ole Miss offense? They lost four of their five key players from that secondary. Only Sertan was back this year, and they've now filled admirably. Much better now watching them than at the beginning of the year. Here's a first down throw to Trey Palmer. In his face, Max Johnson does a good job of getting this ball. Rusher coming right at him. Delivers it right on stride, and that's when Palmer could turn up one of the faster receivers for LSU. Malachi Moore knocked him out of bounds, one of the newcomers in the Alabama secondary and seemingly getting better week in, week out. He leads the tide with three interceptions, had one in the game we did last week. But as Gary said, Sertan was the only guy coming back that had a lot of experience and was a starter. That's first down throw to Trey Bradford. T.J. Finley, whether his day is done or not, he's over there on the sideline, and that's what he's done so far. It's not easy being a true freshman quarterback. Remember, they, these guys were in high school watching this game a year ago. <laughs> Right. Going, I want to play there. Yep. And then they get in there and they go, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know we had to play early, Alabama. A little early. And that throw again, short game to Palmer. Max Johnson, Brad's son. Tom Athens, of course, uh, Mark Richt is his uncle, was recruited by Miami. Your uncle's got to recruit you. <laughs> Woo! Big hit. Put on. So DeMarco Hellams at time number 29. He's playing for Daniel Wright, and he delivers. And you're right, he was ejected for targeting earlier. And that was a nice hit. Talking to the Alabama staff about him, they said, you know, we, we gave Daniel a challenge. He had to hold on to the position. Daniel Wright early in the season, when he was struggling. DeMarco Helms was pushing him, and actually Daniel Wright answered the call. Really improved his play and kept his job. Jamie's got more. Well, earlier today we found out that the power went out at Alabama's hotel. It was right in the middle of a team meal and a couple of meetings, but I was catching up with John Mechie before the game, who rooms with Helms on the road. Mechie was in the shower. He hollered out to Helms when the power went out, who was ironing his shirt, so Helms unfortunately had to arrive the game with a bit of a wrinkled shirt. <laughs> Mechie's shirt was already ironed, but DeMarco Helms had to take the hit there and have a wrinkled shirt. Well, we, we, know, we know about power outages here in the yeah. game yes. because Jamie had to do play-by-play well, play analysis and everything else. Your shirts are probably a little wrinkled after that one, too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and we understand that the entire... This entire level, when we lost power, if you yep. missed it earlier in the game, everybody did. The suites were all dark. And, uh, well, it was kind of interesting, just behind the scenes, Brad didn't know if his microphone was working. So while Jamie was calling the play of what was happening, Brad was actually doing play-by-play -play up here because <laughs> he didn't know for sure whether his mic was working out as the game was going on. It was a pretty interesting to listen to it all take place. Little did we know that Jamie was doing a better job of it than I was. <laughs> Winding down the third quarter, Johnson uh, hit his guy in the hands, but Jenkins couldn't hold it. Yep, ball was slightly behind him. Malachi Moore continued to not give up on the play, and as he said, almost was able to get that one. 
Yeah. Ball's behind. He thought he had a pick. Then he was able to deflect it. And, he, 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 and for a second, it was coming right at him. So, we're going to try a field goal attempt here for LSU. Cade York will come in. His career long is 53. And this is going to be right about at 52. He had a 45-yarder and four extra points in last year's game from 52 yards out. Got it. Nice. Cade York hanging in there. Tax three on from 52 yards away. Problem is LSU needs a whole bunch more scoring in the fourth quarter that is coming up shortly. Tuesday on CBS, follow the FBI's Fugitive Task Force as they hunt down most dangerous criminals in America. From the executive producer of Law and & Order and Chicago PD, if you're on the list, they're on your trail. FBI Most Wanted Tuesday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. So a 41-yard drive in 10 plays with Max Johnson at the controls. Ends in a 52-yard Cade York field goal. And, 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 and we're at 52-17. to 17. You know, why do they go for a field goal? Because I think right now for LSU, they're just trying to play good football. They're not thinking about, you know, coming back, scoring. They're just saying, let's just play good football. Let's improve and try to win our game next week. Preston Stafford teeing it up. Alabama. Alabama's playing for an onside kick. With Slade Bolden, the only guy back deep around the 20-yard line. Got some good players up there, including Najee Harris, the good hands team. And Devontae Smith at the bottom down here. Well, there it is. And a one-hopper. Devontae Smith had it pop out of his hands. But I think Alabama got it anyway, Sir Tanner Harris. That had some juice on it, didn't it? Devontae says, it's the only thing I didn't catch tonight. <laughs> Man. Torrey Carter's in the mix there, too. As they unpile all the bodies. This thing came like a bullet. Boom! Right at the end. Just take that bad hop. That one surprised him out there. Yeah, it was low. Said, it was low. That didn't have any spiral on I, it. I think, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Derek Jeter would have had a problem with that one. That ball's hung on the ground. All of a sudden, it's up in his face. So Alabama gets it. And Mac Jones and the starter is still out there at the 40 five-yard line big shift Robinson comes back into the backfield Alabama has their third tackle in the game two tight ends and Mac Jones to throw waits scrambles throws knocked down nice job defensively by Eli Ricks there's Mac Jones passing chart a lot of green <laughs> not a lot of incompletions no, in there exactly Pretty much no. What's what's really cool about it is how good he is deep with the football. He really throws a long yes, ball does. nice. Yep. Fourth game of 50 plus. By gonna, Alabama. You know what's really, really cool? That offensive line gives him time to throw the ball really deep. No too. doubt. Alabama came in averaging 48 and 48 and a half points a game, and that is above the record pace they had last year. So if they keep this up. Yeah, they've already got 52. This would be the highest scoring team and the most potent offense that Alabama's had. And it's kind of hard to look at and say when it was two in company last year until he got hurt. And then this guy came in, and now it's his team with a big lead. End of three, all Alabama. Set to start the fourth quarter from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. A 52-17 Alabama lead for the top-ranked team in the country. And they start the quarter with a third down and long six in LSU territory. Still the start. They're going to finish off this drive, I think, before we see Bryce Young and some of the backups. And they keep it on the ground. Brian Robinson, he's got the first down and more. As he continues to run hard here in the fourth quarter, welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson. You know, 
Uh, this team uh, is on a roll right now, and you wonder if there's anybody that can stop them, but I don't know. We'll I see. think Alabama will have to help the other team stop them the way they move the ball. You know, talking about Devontae getting those 300 yards, that last touchdown was 20 yards. But degree of difficulty is like Scrabble. <laughs> you multiply by three, right. that should count 60 yards. He made one of those ridiculous catches. So that catches. puts him really close to the 300 <laughs> yards. So Alabama is going to roll into Atlanta, and, and Gary said one play, and that's about it, because now yep. Bryce Young is in at quarterback. And Brian Robinson still running it in for Najee Harris and takes it almost down to the 20-yard line, very close to a first down. So Mac Jones' night is done. 20 out of 28, 385 yards and four touchdowns, which gives him 27 on the season. About as efficient as you can be. He's got a great personality. All the interviews after the game, he says the right things, you know, yeah. just looking for to win the championship. Does all the right things in the pocket. Very emotional football player. Robinson a little dancing around, but he does get the first down as Alabama's right back in the red zone. You know, coming into this year, Alabama didn't need to make a statement to the College Football Selection Committee, but they're making one anyway. I think it helps them know if, if the worst case scenario happens. Let's suppose they go into that championship game undefeated and Florida upsets them. I think they're in. They win the way they're winning now. They beat Arkansas. I think they're going into that game, win or lose, they're in the playoffs. Low snap. Handled well, though, and Robinson blasts his way for a first down. Inside the 10, around the 7. One thing, you know, you put in the backup quarterback, but you keep in that starting offensive line. Those five guys are there, and they do the job. That time, Lyndon Dickerson reaches from that center position and seals off that nose tackle, and that's what made that play go. And there you see Robinson in for Najee Harris with 62 yards on 11 carries already. Alabama's going to come into that jumbo set again. Kendall Randolph, Josh McMillan and company. Bryce Young takes a look at the play call on his wristband. <laughs> Take a time out. The wristband, a little too slow to read that thing. Mac Jones even helping from the sideline for his young quarterback. I have something for you. We take a look at our game recap. 52 to 17 at this point. How did we get there, you ask? Well, first of all, Najee does no touchdowns. Three more tonight for Najee Harris. About 145 yards, 21 carries, three scores, gives him 20 for the season. Devontae Smith dominating as he always seems to do. Eight catches, 231, and three scoring strikes from Mac Jones. And including this ridiculous catch and in the back of the end zone right before halftime. And then you add that to the quarterback, Mac Jones, 20 of 28, 385 and four. And the last two games against LSU, that's a whole career for some guys. Boris Dahl in motion, and we got some motion on the front for Alabama's Deontay Brown, I think, fell out of his stance, number 65. Ball start, offense number 65. Five-yard penalty, still first down. You can almost see Deontay Brown talking to Bryce Young. Go, that's not the way Mac does that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like uh, he he does a different snap count, and I just couldn't hold the water right no, now. No, I couldn't hold it. It's hard for that big a body to slow down, and he couldn't. So they back it up to the 12-yard line, first and goal. And the inside give down to the nine is Jace McClellan. Mac Jones going to, I, I think we would have probably had it in the end zone already, but I'm not sure. Just one more thing about Mac Jones, accepting the challenge to come to Alabama. Remember, when he came, Jalen Hurts was the SEC Offensive Player of the Year at quarterback. Yeah. They had just recruited Tua to play quarterback, a five-star, and then they've got a little acting going on right there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was Dickerson again. He, he's nuts. He, he? He's crazy. Yep. Play action. Young trying to throw. They'll dump him, and it's Allie Gay with a sack. So Alabama going the wrong direction right now in their goal-to-go situation. 
Does it? Nothing there. Gay's right in his face. Nobody to throw to, and he has to eat it. Kind of like this. You know, I just get him in there, leave him in with the first string offensive line, get him some reps. You know, what What happened if there's a disaster? And, you know, Mac Jones goes down. You've got to have this guy with some reps throwing the ball, doing something with this first team offense. So now third down, a goal. Back at the 16. Bryce Young to the end zone, almost intercepted by Stingley. It was intended for Devontae Smith. And it's fourth down. Protection was great. Ball was a half a second late, and as Ness said, almost the opportunity for 24 to make the play. And so that'll bring out the field goal unit and Will Reichard. Perfect on the season as both a field goal kicker and in his extra points. This will be from 34 yards out. And he's got it up and good to make it 55 to 17. Alabama 10-50 away from a trip to Atlanta. Short drive culminated in a field goal coming up. A little bit later, play the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. You could pick several out. You're wearing crimson and whites. Chase Allen set to kick away. With 10.50 remaining in the ballgame. I think with LSU's uh, numbers of scholarships, players down between 25 and 30, this is a tough finish for them. They don't have that many backups to put in. Yeah. Well, earlier we were giving Jamie Erdahl a lot of credit because it's her birthday week, and we had a virtual party. There she was in the hotel room the other night. No, actually, that's that's back a few years. Oh, my God. And then, you know, we love it when she's sweet 16, but when she's twice that old, then my, she's a mom. My mom. And there's Brookie, and there's the oh, whole family, including thanks, Sam, guys. whose birthday... Sam's, Sam's and birthday. Sam, happy birthday, Sam. Sam. Well, I blame my mother and a little bit my husband, but I can't blame him because it's was his birthday, too. Jamie's birthday Thursday and her husband Sam's yesterday. And meanwhile, uh, Brooke looked a lot happier in that family photo <laughs> than she did with Santa today. That was not she a good did. one. She was not a good look. Well, no. we teach her stranger danger, so, you know, uh, I guess we got that going for us. Well, every kid Thank seems you. to have one of those times where I they know. go crazy only, with Santa. It's only good for blackmail later in life, right? <laughs> you guys tell me that, right? Yep. Exactly. Make it four, five, six, though. You'll have to take them back two or three times. <laughs> The Max Johnson running the show here, fires on a crossing route, got it to Carter, and Tory Carter with the first down. <laughs> Mac Jones, after his performance today, has 28 touchdowns. Justin Fields, another good performance today in a win. Trevor Lawrence with 26. Kyle Trask has 38 touchdown passes. Ian Book, Heisman contenders. He doesn't have the kind of numbers. But hey, they're undefeated. Well, first of all, how about that game that Justin Fields played today? I mean, he took that football team into Spartan Stadium and he, he was on a mission to win that game. Yep. But the other guys are going to get to play each other. You know, and, and every and I believe this year in this shortened year with less games, the voters will hold their vote till the last game is played. And the last game will be Florida against Alabama. I never vote until the uh, championship games are over with, and so I will wait again. I don't know why some people do. But I don't either, but... Remember, Nick Saban, the, the, his loss in the SEC championship back to 2008, that was Florida. And Tim Tebow, the last time, the only time he's lost in the SEC championship. Well, Florida wrapped up the East earlier, if you missed it. And they went over Tennessee in our first game of a doubleheader on CBS. Alabama is 938 away from wrapping up the West. And the two best teams in the SEC should be a lot of fun December 19th in Atlanta. And it'll be the 10th meeting between those two. Johnson on the carry and got the first down. Go back to that graphic again. Last meeting, Alabama cruised 54 to 16. 
That Florida team did not have the kind of offense this Florida team had. Not even close. Good football team, but it was a defensive football team. Jim McElwain's team came into there, they had quarterback problems. They don't have quarterback problems this year. <laughs> no, they don't. And they've got a special, unique player in Kyle Pitts. And that's going to be that matchup with that tight end position. He's a, when you have a matchup problem at tight end or running back, give you an example, Clyde Edwards Alaire last year. Yeah. That drove defenses crazy. That's what Pitts is doing for L for Florida against defenses. Florida doesn't have the kind of ground game, though, that no. LSU had. And maybe that's going to be their shortcoming. We'll see. LSU takes a timeout. First charge, timeout of the half. With 8.39, their freshman quarterback will have a word on the sideline with the coaching staff, trailing 55 to 17. Six, just part of the offensive juggernaut of Alabama with a 55-point outing. And their per-game average will go up a little bit. And a big <laughs> smile on the face of the Louisiana native. Why would he not? <laughs> From the 29, first down for LSU. Going to finish off a lopsided game strong. Max Johnson throws. Nobody home. Incomplete. Chris Allen was putting the pressure on him. Time permitting, after our game, we'll have the college football post-game show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Max Johnson did a good job that time because, as Ness told you, you had two guys Allen and will actually will Anderson both on him and he gave up ground did not get sacked got rid of the ball and lived to play another game down here which is second and ten at the eight and a half minute mark especially on first down coach gives you a call a pass you can't take a sack you got to at least at the worst incomplete throw it away get second and ten three receivers to his left and the left hand is in trouble and no was not a good landing as he goes down and hopefully he's okay Apparently is good. I just said you got to have a lot of numbers for this defensive line because they come from different angles. That time the linebacker Christian Harris was one of them. Will Anderson was one of them. I think Brian Young, 47, was one of them. There was three different guys in there at the same time. Will Anderson must have heard us talking about him because he's picked up his sack total tonight. I'll tell you that. Here's that look again. Three down linemen, six man front, and they bring the free safety. In a hurry. And a crossing route is complete. And Boutte trying to spin his way for a first down gets thrown out by Malachi Moore about a yard shy. So if you show on tape that you're having problems with the six man front, then they all bail and you bring the safety this time. This is what LSU's been dealing with, but maybe a step too deep before he blitzed. And Johnson pick up the first down on the sneak. He can, his forward progress got it for him anyway. Yep, now we're getting a little chippy. Some frustration showing. And again, the, the, the leaders of this Alabama team got to protect their players from getting thrown out right now. You don't want a mistake, not play the first half of the next game. Officials do a nice job of getting everybody separated and not throwing a flag in that case. Leaders of these teams, big game, how you see it coming across that time. Rosenthal pushes, push back. Easy, easy, easy. In the red zone at the 19, first down LSU. Johnson, quick throw, catch, and close to another first down as Boutte might have it. So Nick Saban may take out his quarterback. He may take out his number one receiver. He may take out Najee. But he doesn't like anybody <laughs> scoring on his defense. He's got his number one defense out there. Second down and a yard inside the 10. Bradford, he's got the first down and more. Down up the five, maybe the four. It'll be first and goal. You can hear now as the stadium's empty, the officials saying easy out, easy out, easy out. Yep. They don't want anybody getting in a fight either. They know the rules, you're right. A good job of officiating down there. Telling the guys, slow, 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 don't get in trouble. We don't want to throw a flag on you. Well, six minutes to go.
and tough sledding on the ground for LSU, to say the least. Johnson throws. Oh, what a catch by Gilbert. Ball goes into the end zone. Gonna say he was down or they are calling it complete though, aren't they? Yeah, pretty good job. Great catch by Gilbert. Matt Johnson gets him the ball. Josh McMillan does his job, runs it down, and gets a hand on it. Johnson trying to quarterback sneak. They're trying to push him in. They're not gonna make it. Eric Gilbert, who was the high school Gatorade player of the year as a tight end in Georgia last year. That's yep. that's what they love about this dude. He's gonna be good. He's gonna be one of those matchup problems like Kyle Pitts. Yep. The tight end position has uh, really grown in college football. They watch that NFL game, they see those guys doing it. Yep. They're coming in droves. They're all six foot three, six foot four, 240, 50 pounds, and they can run. Johnson bobbled a snap, got to try to get rid of it. Somehow left-handed it out of there as Malachi Moore was draped all over him. And that was just too fast. It didn't help with the snap. First of all, he had to locate it. Yep. And by that time, number 13's in his chin strap. But he did get rid of it. And, and towards an eligible receiver. Right, Carter was in the vicinity. So it's fourth and goal. Bradford flushes out of the backfield as a wide out. Man, quarterback draw. Or go to the tight end. It almost one-handed it. Sertan was there, number two on number two. And it's incomplete. And Alabama will take over on downs. The pride of this Alabama defense got a big lead, but they didn't want anybody scoring on them. They gave up two in the first half, and they said no more. Almost a one-handed catch, but Sertan gets a hand in there late. Alabama will have it on offense when we come back. Time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. It was the third scoring toss for Mac Jones to Devontae Smith on this ridiculous catch in the back of the end zone. This is how Eli Gold, our buddy, called it on the Crimson Tide Radio Network. Gets the snap. Back stands in. Throws back to the end zone. High. Devontae. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown, Alabama. Devontae goes up. Makes an unbelievable touchdown catch. It was one of his three today. Good for 231 yards on eight catches. Alabama has to work from its own goal line here. Just trying to get... A couple of yards out, so they've got a little more room to work. And they have the second offensive line in there as well, so all the starters are on the sideline now. Devontae had touchdown catches of 20, 65, and 61 today. In the game last year, he caught seven for 213, including an 85-yarder, the longest of his career in two touchdowns. So you saw those accumulated numbers over the last two games against LSU. Uh, not much more you can say about how good he is and how good he's been in this matchup between Alabama and LSU. I think when the Alabama players are interviewed after the game, they're going to talk a lot about last year's game, seeing, and, and, and deservedly so. LSU, you know, I mean, they deserve that win to celebrate on their turf, but I think that's stuck in their craw. Yeah. You know, they carried Joe Burrow off yep. last year. and There was a, a leaked, uh, you know, celebration in the locker, in the locker room. room that was supposed to be kept in locker room. Yep. So, But these two guys remember, and two of the guys that came back, and two of the guys that Nick Saban told us about his seniors in the game against uh, Auburn last week. He said, these dudes came back, and that's what I'm most proud of, and they have been the leaders of this team, and they lead by example, don't they? They do some remarkable things on the field. Bryce Young on the give. And here's a big hole. And all the way into the secondary goes Jace McClellan again. And he's going to be a good one, it appears, as he's getting more and more time here in the last two or three weeks. Yeah, he was a late recruit that Alabama turned from Oklahoma. He's a Texas kid. Going to get his turn, as you said and uh, makes it there. 
So. Second offensive line opened up a gashing hole, didn't they? Roy Dye Williams now will come in. McClellan gets a hand from Najee Harris and from Coach Saban on the sideline. Nice. Puts in a lot of work. 249, we got a timeout. College football playoff top 10, Alabama soon to be 9 and 0. Notre Dame's 10 and 0 after slowing, uh, having a slow start against Syracuse and then pouring it on. Clemson beat Virginia Tech, Ohio State a winner over Michigan State, and then you see five through 10. You know, I always at this time of the year I say which teams control their own spot, and normally you'd say Ohio State, but do they have enough games? Is the question mark? Five is not as it's half as many as. Notre Dame's got right now. It's going to be the huge talking point at the end of the season, especially the Michigan game is in doubt. They, they've shut down their program. Everybody knows. I, I think everybody would agree that Ohio State is talented enough to be one of the top four teams. But when you only play half as many games, you right. know, there's always a possibility of an upset. So obviously Florida controls their spot. If they win the SEC championship with one loss, they control their spot. Well, if they beat Alabama in the SEC title game, you can't tell me that this these guys aren't good no, enough. No, no, Alabama. If, if Alabama goes on to beat, it, I think it's going to be. Remember last year when we did LSU in the championship against Georgia, we thought their spot was assured. Yeah. I think it's going to be the same. Remember, the SEC to this date is the only conference that has not canceled the football game. Right. I mean, that is a testament to planning. It's been hard work. A lot of work has been put in. They, they, they elongated the schedule. They moved teams around. They've done a good job to try to get everybody to play all 10 games. And here's a first down run by Roy Dell Williams. Najee over on the sideline with the towel. I don't know. I think his hands are cold, to be honest with you. At one point, we thought maybe he had injured something, but... Uh, well, we won't know until after the game, but he's he's a veteran. He might have put that towel on just so that we would shoot it to see what's wrong. Exactly. With the towel just on so we can get a little more, little more yes. air time. <laughs> <laughs> now, another sensational game for him today. As he has gone over a thousand yards rushing. It is 145 yard day. Alabama has rushed for over 100 yards in each half of this game. Spread it out evenly. They've been running since the beginning of the game. They started with Najee. They worked their way to Brian Robinson. They went to Jace McClellan. And now we got Roydell Williams running. So everybody's getting a taste, including backup quarterback Bryce Young here in the last minute and a half. Well, you, you can salute a lot of people, a lot of coaches. Of course, this Nick Saban staff he's put together. But Steve Sarkeesian, you, you got to look at the job he has done here in his two years. I mean, Lane Kiffin did it. Brian Dable did it for a while. But now what Sark's doing with this offense, as I said, they lost four number one draft picks off this offense. Mm -hmm. right. They're going to have a couple more. <laughs> but it's going to have more than more than a couple more first round draft choices off this team. Too. I, t I tell you, the other team that's very interesting when you look at that the top 10 with the college football playoff poll, Texas a and was raising their hand and go, I know we lost and it was a big score, but you want to play Alabama? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Good luck. Because <laughs> we can make an argument. And yeah, we, we admit Alabama's better than us, but we're not going to really admit to anything else if you're a &M. So it's a trip to the SEC championship game against Florida coming up in uh, what is that two weeks three weeks two weeks two weeks two weeks Yeah, we got Army Navy and then we got the SEC championship game. Bryce Young takes a knee Alabama will go to nine and oh And they won 97 straight games against unranked opponents and if you're worried about Najee Harris with that towel, he did have a heating pad on the inside. I told you his hands were cold. He's from California. <laughs> That's I mean, right. It's, it's probably 40 degrees out here right now. So the payback from a year ago is complete for the Crimson Tide. And LSU drops to 3-5. and five. The Tide goes to 9-0. and oh, And they go to Atlanta against Florida. Here's how it looks. This is what we're talking about. Alabama 
a clincher here against LSU. Florida did likewise in their game with Tennessee earlier today. And so those two teams, number one and number six, get together on the 19th for the SEC championship game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And Jamie's with the winning coach. Coach, I know we talked before the game about consistency, and then we talked at halftime about mental errors. How did this game play out for you from a big picture standpoint? Well, I think we played better in the second half. I think it was good experience for us. Uh, I think we played really well offensively in the game and you know, sort of controlled the tempo of the game offensively. So, uh, and I thought we played better on defense in the second half. So. Uh, we made some adjustments and the kids responded well, so just got to keep on keeping on. We saw some emotions from your players, perhaps both good and bad as that game wore on. How have you taught them to channel that appropriately as this season has progressed? Well, you, got, you know, you want guys to play with emotion, but you really don't want them to be emotional because when you get emotional, you make bad decisions. And you know, there was a lot of emotion on both sides, and we don't like for our guys to talk to the other players and not get involved in things like that. So, you know, the way you can win with class, and that's certainly what we want our players to do. We're seeing Devontae Smith go over and greet his family, and I know he's a local guy. Do you love moments like this and seeing a kid come back here and perform the, that way? Well, no, no question about it. I think we have four guys in the front seven from this area, and Smitty, obviously, uh, is an outstanding player for us, and uh, just love him as a person and love him as a player, and he's a great competitor, and. I'm sure this means a lot to him. So you're headed to the SEC championship. Congrats, Coach. Well, we got a game next week, I think, too, so we better take care of business. My mistake. Thank, right. you, Thank you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't your mistake. It's just Nick's way of cutting you off. Yeah, that's, that's the process. Yeah. <laughs> well, he went to two SEC championship games when he was here in Baton Rouge. Now he's going for the eighth time with the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Congratulations to the West Champs. Congratulations to Florida and the East. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for the big one at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The tide rolls to win number nine. That's going to wrap it up for Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, Gene Steratour, Brad Nestler saying so long from Tiger Stadium and Death Valley. Big win for the tide, 55-17 from Baton Rouge. Good night, everybody.